It's a battle of Spartans tonight in Greensboro as the UNCG Spartans are back at home for the first time this season, hoping to get a win inside Fleming Gymnasium for the first time in nearly two years. They'll try to do it against the Norfolk State Spartans who are in town for the Spartan Aggie Tournament this weekend. Gabe Genovese with you alongside Jake Hermata. Appreciate everyone tuning in tonight. And Jake, after a rough spring season for UNCG in which they only won two matches, they got this fall season off to a good start. Yeah, Gabe, they're already 2-1. and one. They've already matched last year's win total, and obviously you want to get over that. That's... That's the hump you want to get over, right? You, you have all you have last year behind you. It was a rough year for everybody involved, and now you have this year. And looking forward to to this roster, to this season, two and one, and an impressive, impressive opening weekend too for UNCG. I mean, uh, wow, three and one uh, against Radford. They lost to EKU, but they went down tough. And also App State in a sweep of that as well. So off to a great start. I know a lot of folks around UNCG are happy about that. Norfolk State comes in zero and one, only playing one match earlier this week a five set loss against Hampton on Tuesday but the star in that one for Norfolk State just very impressive Shante Seal. Seal 24 kills 14 digs she had 262 for that for in that match it was her debut too for NSU what a heck of a debut right I mean sure uh, NSU came they, they didn't win that matchup at all but that's that's a great sign. I mean, if that's your debut, you're thinking maybe a little jitters, jitters here and there, but none from Seal at, at all in there. I mean, the, the transfer from Dakota College, NJCA D2 All-Region last year as an individual, so they have a star in her. I'm anxious to see her today. You mentioned it. She came in with some high hopes because of the way she played at her previous school, Dakota College, and she showed why last weekend for Norfolk State. For UNCG, there are multiple Spartans you could go to with good performances last weekend, but Kayla White was a big one. Kayla White was huge. Double doubles in her first two matches. She had 15 kills, 17 digs against Radford, added 18 more and 13 digs against EKU in that five-set loss. She's another one. I mean, 43 kills all last weekend. I'm really excited to see what she brings to the table this year in this, in this new and improved, I think, UNCG team that comes into today at 2-1. Let's give you the starters for this one for both sides. We'll start with Norfolk State. Rachel Williams, a 5'10 redshirt senior on the outside from Mesquite, Texas, gets the start. She had nine kills against Hampton. Nicole Rodriguez, the 5'5 senior libero, 24 digs, led Norfolk State against Hampton. Kyla Hunter, just a freshman, 5'1 freshman, also from Mesquite, Texas. She had six digs on Tuesday. Kendra McRuffin, six foot junior over the middle out of Glen Heights, Texas, second on this Norfolk State team with four blocks on Tuesday. We mentioned Shante Seal, the 5'10 junior out of Bridgetown Barbados, gets the start, obviously, with her 24 kills Tuesday. Gracie Teeter, six foot junior middle blocker out of Knoxville, Tennessee, and Karis Cross, the 5'11 freshman setter, rounds it out for Norfolk State. For UNCG, Jenna Wiggs, the 5'5 five, five senior defensive specialist out of Gainesville, Florida, 33 digs in the three matches. Last weekend gets the start. Hannah Near over the middle with a 6'2 junior, 18 blocks in the three matches. Last weekend leads the Spartans. Jocelyn Carter, the 5'10 freshman out of Richmond Heights, Ohio, gets the start. Seven kills, four blocks total last weekend for her. For her. Gray Breen, 6'1", junior over the middle out of Atlanta, Georgia. Gabriella McHugh, the six-foot junior setter, 105 assists in the three matches last weekend. Mandy Garvins and Kayla White rounded out for the Spartans. And speaking of Mandy Garvins, she serves to get this one underway. Near over the middle. Kept alive, and Rodriguez sends it over. Down the line, and just kept alive by Norfolk State. White, dug out by Rodriguez. How about this defense to start for NSU? White again, this time finds the floor. Kayla White, we mentioned her in the pregame. 47 kills to lead UNCG. 
and she gets on the board there. I mean, in her last match, too, against App State, she had 344 game. I mean, 14 kills, just three errors and 32 total attacks. But you got to give kudos to the back row of NSU, and you, you see that serve sail, sail a little long. But Nicole Rodriguez in the back row. I'm also seeing Rachel Williams, too, number one in the back row, put on a – I mean, at least in that first volley, they, they ate a couple tough shots from, uh, from UNCG. It's not often on the first point you, you might see a volley of the night. Right. You it's a good sign. Yeah, that is a good sign. You mentioned Garvin's serve went long, tied at one here in set one. Wiggs there to receive that serve, and White misses just long. Norfolk State 2-1. Really interested to see what White does coming into this year. You know, I mean, she was at the D2 level, Metro State, 663 kills in four years there, but more digs, 777. Not often you see somebody with, with her attacking prowess be just as good on the defensive side. Here she is. Can't convert there. White, cross court, Rodriguez there. Wiggs keeps it up for UNCG. Carter on the tip. Rodriguez, the free ball. Near blocked back. Gracie Teeter, the six-foot junior out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Her sixth block of the year. Yeah, and her first solo block, too. One-on-one, -on -one. Teeter stood tall there. And Teeter, Iowa Western Community College transfer. She had a heck of a uh, community uh, NJCAA career. Iowa Western, where Teeter came from, NJCAA Division I National Champs last year. There she is again on a uh, double block there. Near. Now over the middle, Teeter converts. So she gets the solo block. She comes back over the middle, and Norfolk State leads 4-1. Yeah, I mean, she had five blocks in that loss against Hampton, and I mean, there, there's her ninth kill in the year, too. She looks dominant early with an NSU three-point lead. McRuffin serves into the strings. UNCG gets gifted a point for two. One thing too, I mean, reading all the, reading about the the, Ham the Hampton match too, NSU they were down 0-2, and they came back to force set five. It's unfortunate for them, so I'm really curious to see how hungry they are in this one. And so far, I mean, they we're up they're up, we're up three now they're up two, but very interested to see how how, uh, how they come out here after that loss. Off the block and down for Rachel Williams, 5-2 the Norfolk State lead. You mentioned that Hampton match, Jake, and we, we talked about UNCG's rough spring season. Norfolk State, you could say the, say the same, 1-5. in five. Yeah. They got every match canceled after February 12th, only got six matches in, so they're kind of looking to get things off on the right foot this year, too, and yes, it was a loss, but... If you're third-year head coach Kathy Bullock, you love to just see the fight out of your group. You really do, especially, and, and you feel so bad for teams, you know, just like NSU. I mean, only six matches into the year, you have to cancel your year, and I mean, one in five. I don't really think a one in five year in six matches that that is not. You can't get a lot of. You can't. Can't really judge. You it. can't really judge your team after after yeah. six matches. So I mean, to, to see a three-two, of course, a five-set loss, a loss is a loss. But still, after just six matches last year, you got pretty much the same group back. It's positive. It's a good yeah. sign. It's a really good sign. Five. I mean, they're returning, uh, returning eight, including five of their starters. So sorry, sorry to step on you, Gabe. 5-3, the Norfolk State lead here in set one. Stephanie Meisenborg back to serve for UNCG. 5-8 senior out of Noblesville, Indiana. Her 17 aces in the spring for UNCG, the most on this Spartan squad. And in a shortened season, it's pretty good. Yeah. Looks like there's a uh, scoreboard. They, they had some trouble adding the point for UNCG. Yeah. Scoreboard malfunction. Set to go.
Breen goes cross court, can't convert. That's too easy for Rachel Williams. You know what, that Williams swing does not happen without Kyla Hunter in the back row. She laid out <laughs> for she laid out for the one shot by UNCG. I mean, she literally airborne, kept it up with her forearm there. Hunter just a crazy. freshman out of Mesquite, Texas. 4.7 digs per set at Poteet High School her senior year. Second team all district was also the district libero of the year her junior season. Joust at the net, kept alive by McHugh, and now White straight to Rodriguez. Breen over the middle. Finally gets one to go, six to four, the Norfolk State lead. Just taking a look at some of the stats here right now. UNCG is just as an offense early, just hitting 0-5-6 for the set, and NSU up to 2-14. And I mean, in that in that five setter. It, NSU struggled with their offense early. Of course, they gathered that in the back half of the match, but you know this is completely, I would say, where NSU wants to be. They struggled to start the match last or in their first match of the year, and they're off to a pretty good start here. But again, it's only a two-point lead. They're not going to stop here. White from the back row. Williams the other way. Splits Wiggs and White. And excuse me, that was... It's her third kill of the it, match. It was, her it was her third kill, apologies. Three kills, no errors, and seven attempts for Williams. White from the back row, got it, 7-5. Looking at Kayla White, we highlighted her to start this match. 11 attempts, two kills. She's hitting under 100. Cole Rodriguez, two for NSU. She said <laughs> she's already up to seven digs in this first set game. You mentioned Kayla White with 11 attempts as that serve goes long. She's clearly the number one option for this UNCG team this year. Again, it's early, this being just match number four, but when you've got 47 kills in three matches, we'll make it 49 now after the two today. Yeah, you, you really do look at her as your lead cannon and your 0-1, as they like to say. And violation here on NSU, so UNCG gets a point here, so they're still down two. But yeah, I mean, but you also have Brittany Wood, too. She had 31 kills, too, last yep. weekend, so White isn't the sole option for UNCG. They look like they have some weapons out there. Norfolk State clinging to a two-point lead here in set one. And to your point earlier about kind of the start that Norfolk State is off to, that might be a negative. You're off to kind of the start you want to, but you're only up by two here in set one. Well, with only a six-match sample size from last year, not really knowing. You, couldn't, you, can't really, you can't build a team identity in six matches last year. And you prove yourselves to be a, a team of fighters to begin. How do you handle your hot start, you know? I mean, a team in NSU, they, they hit 133 and 222 in the, in the first two sets in their last match. Here they're off to a better start. I mean, two, they were hitting 253 before, now they're down to 211, but still, I mean, trying to find yourself if you're NSU. That last kill by Shante Seal gets her on the board, her first kill in four attempts. Highlighted. Seal in the pregame at 24 kills in the match against Hampton as that one way wide off the hand of Jocelyn Carter. Yeah, Carter, Richmond Heights, Ohio, proud product of Gilmore Academy near Cleveland. Helped lead her team to a state semifinal appearance in her time there. A little wide there, UNCG off to a pretty rough start when you look at it. Still, still hitting under 100. I mean, this is an offense too that held opponents to 133 uh, last weekend. They hit 231 as a team last weekend. That's served by Garvin's into the strings. And apologies, I, 
uh, we missed the official signal. They did give that kill to Carter. So there must have been there a must violation have been a or a tip. Could have been, yeah, we missed that. I unfortunately didn't see that. But, yeah, there most likely was a tip at the net. Normally when those shot when shots like that go that wide, there's normally some contact at the net. Or a player really got under it. Hannah Near converts, and it's 10-8. Near's first kill in five swings. Jenna Wiggs back to serve, 5'5 five five senior, defensive specialist out of Gainesville, Florida. And Wiggs with the ace. Make it 10-9, Norfolk State. I feel like that's something UNCG really needed. I mean, their, their offense really hasn't been there. So how can you make up for it? Behind the line. Back to back for Wiggs, and we're tied at 10 here in set one. And after starting this set with three service errors and no aces to show for it, Wiggs goes back to back to tie it at 10. What a dig by Garvins. Carter. Misses just long. 11-10, the Norfolk State lead. Carter really wanted that one, too. Saw her body language once the line judge gave the, uh, the signal that it was out of bounds. And that would have been a pivotal moment, too, for UNCG. They just would have gotten over the hump to, to get back the lead, but Norfolk State back out on top. It didn't miss my much. No, it didn't. It really didn't. But you like that aggressiveness. Carter again, way long. Yeah, she got under that one by quite a bit. She was a little off the net, too. Maybe further away from the net than she would have liked. Brown serves. White down the line. Can Brown get it over? Yes, she can. Breen over the middle. Eventually gets it to go. You know, you kind of hold your breath when athletes run past the benches and out towards the stand, just, you know, just brace for impact kind of, you know. But uh, Seal, great, great effort. But UNCG here, now they're starting to find something, Gabe. See if they can get over the hump. Kind of feels like a rough start, but only down by one. Yeah, and honestly, if this is considered a quote-unquote rough start. You'll take it. You'll take it. Meisenborg serves. From the back row, Seal. The other way, Breen blocked. Spartans there to keep it alive. White off the block and down. We're tied at 12. That's what you want, especially with the rough start. You got to you know, scratch and claw your way back into things, and UNCG is. And I know it's only the opening weekend, but a lot of people around here are excited to see, you know, two wins. You match your win total from last year, even though it was a shortened season. But, you know, there's a lot of talk about how this UNCG team's improved, so let's see it. White taps one down the line and finds the floor, 13-12. That's smart, that's really smart. You act like you're gonna go up for the big kill, but instead you see the pocket, you push for it, and you get your team up on, out on top 13-12. The court vision. Yeah, oh, absolutely, I mean, she's a graduate student. She's been around this game for a little while now. Meisenborg into the strings. We're tied at 13, that ends a 3-0 spurt for the Spartans. And I say for the Spartans, we've got two <laughs> sets of Spartans here. You know, we hit on that uh, before the broadcast, and uh, I guess we can't really say the word Spartans today. I, we will do our best to say UNCG <laughs> and Norfolk State. Here's White again, kept alive by Rodriguez. And there's a cross-court kill for Eichelberger. 14-13, the NSU lead. Yeah, how about the right hand from the redshirt senior? I mean, she stands 5'11", kill number 11 for her. She had 10 in the first match against Hampton. Three total blocks, too. She hit 381. I uh, think that's the first we've seen it for tonight, too. That was Eichelberger's first kill. Gray Breen just misses. They wanted a touch. They're not going to get it, and it's 15-13. Yeah, Gray Breen kind of shot 
a little look of disbelief to our up referee, but she's not going to get that call. So NSU goes into the break on top. 15-13 NSU. We'll be back for more from Fleming Gymnasium after this. Well, after UNCG went on a 3-0 run to get back in it, Norfolk State goes on a 3-0 run of their own, and it's 15-13 NSU at the media timeout. About set to go once again. What have you seen in the first half of this first set from each of these teams? I've seen great and phenomenal defense from NSU. Not so much on that volley <laughs> there, but I, unfortunately, I feel like I jinxed them there, unfor uh, yeah, unfortunately. But I, a lot of great defensive plays from, from NSU. I mean, they're, if, it, if you're the coaching staff, too, I was going to say the Spartans, but of Norfolk State, you're happy about that. I like their fight. I like their grittiness. Uh, UNCG, on the other hand, they have some offensive woes. They're hitting just 147 for the match, um, but I, just, I, I feel like they're they're gonna get they're gonna get there uh, eventually. They're they're gonna show us something that they're gonna show us who they were from last weekend, and that's the team I've I've been really excited to see in my preparation for this match. Meisenborg there to keep it up. The dump by McHugh goes, and we're tied at 15. You do see that from McHugh a little bit. I mean, that's her 13 kill on the year. We haven't seen that much from her today, though. Not today, but to your point, after last weekend, she picks her spots very well. There's the block from Breen to give UNCG the lead. It's her first lead, I think. If it's not for the first time this set game, it's the first time in a while. See what they do with this momentum. Believe it's the second lead of the set for the Spartans. That one misses wide off the hand of Seal and UNCG a 17-15 lead. Yeah, so they went into the media timeout where NSU had a 3-0 run. Now they're on a 3-0 run, 4-0 run, sorry, themselves. It's been a game of runs. Breen down the line. Got it. 18-15. You like to see that from her. I mean, the, the season opener against Radford, Breen was, she had eight kills, no errors, and 18 attempts. She can show she's efficient. That forces a timeout from third-year head coach Kathy Bullock. This is the largest lead of the set for UNCG, 18-15. And it's completely flipped on Norfolk State after a pretty good start. Yeah, and I think and we had talked about it a little bit too. At one point in this set in the very beginning, UNCG, they weren't even hitting 100. And we kind of knew that that wasn't going to be the case. They're, they're a much better offensive team than that. I mean, when you look at it, they, they hit 231 last weekend. Even though they lost in five sets to EKU, their blocking was phenomenal in that matchup. They had 15. So you knew that that wasn't the team that that, that – had that three match set last weekend you knew eventually something was going to click and, and here it is so now I'm curious to see how Norfolk State responds I mean they were off to a hot start like we said and last weekend they didn't really see much of that or yeah against Hampton they didn't really see much of that they had to battle their way back and force it and force that fifth set so let's see what this group of fighters can do but to continue with your point what I was going to say is you've seen that fight from Norfolk State Tuesday against Hampton. It's just a matter of, okay, now you've lost a lead. Can you get it back? Yeah, I, oh, absolutely. White to serve for UNCG out of the timeout. And it's long. And honestly, if you're Norfolk State, you start with that. You know, you were up pretty much the whole first set. You find yourself in a three three-point hole. They're going to gift you. If they're going to gift you a point to to start your run, this, take is, it. this is a great starting point. And there's an ace to make it 18-17. Rachel Williams with her second ace of the young season, and Norfolk State right back in it. You didn't even have to swing the, swing at the ball once. The last, and you you get gifted two points. But then you do that. You give one back right there. 19-17 UNCG. Gray Breen to serve. 
She did have three aces last weekend. That one just long off the hand of Brittany Wood, and it's 1918. And I will say that about Norfolk State. Even though they were they were all sorts out of system, every time they shot a free ball back over to UNCG, they took the setter, UNCG setter, McHugh out of it. And that too, when you're, I mean, you always try to aim for the setter to get that the other team out of system as well. They did a good job with that, and it ended up in their favor. Short serve, Wood taps over. Norfolk State the other way. And it's Seal who converts to tie it at 19. I like Seal, even though I mean, that, that's her second, only her second kill so far. And now she's hitting zero. I mean, we, we highlighted her and how fantastic she was. 26 kills now in the year. I think we're going to see a lot more from her this, this match. A ton more. Rodriguez serves. Meisenborg decides to play it. It would have been close, but somehow Brittany Wood converts. I think that serve is out, Gabe. I think that serve is out, but you know what? Someone wished on a, someone found a four leaf clover in the, in the crowd somewhere or something. That was a little. <laughs> like, I meant to do that. That was supposed to happen. I mean, they have the lead, they're five points away. Sometimes you need a little luck to go your way in order to uh, get a match to go your way. McHugh and near ace. Instead, it's Eichelberger who earns the point for Norfolk State to tie it at 20. Yeah, but it was off the, I don't know if it was off the shoulder of Brittany Wood or, I mean, I know her teammates are kind of looking at her, but asking if she's okay. But... It, it definitely wasn't in her hands. I know that. Hopefully she, she does look okay, so. Carter with a little tap, and it's 21-20. Don't need to crush it every time. You could throw a little change up. As long as, it, as long as it hits the floor, who cares what it looks like? Garvin's back to serve. Three aces in the three matches last weekend. Couple of service errors today, and there's another one, and she puts her head in her hands. Every serve she's hit has just kind of come off a little wrong today. You could tell off her hand. I'm sure she knew it too. As soon as it was off her hand, she knew exactly where it was going to go and right into the strings. Tied at 21. Garvin's receives that serve. Near goes with the change up and finds the floor. Typical campfire, you know, you, you put it right in the middle of the defense where everybody's huddled around it. She saw the space, she connects. Hannah near two kills and six swings. We're gonna get a timeout, I believe, by Kathy Bullock. Yeah, I think it was NSU called the timeout. So 22-21 UNCG, we've kind of teeter-tottered here as of late. And you kind of like that too, especially a team in UNCG who wants to, they, they definitely want to have a better year than they did last year. Um, showed a lot of promise in the, in, in the opening weekend, two and one, five set loss. Okay, you can brush that off, you live and you learn from it. Then you have a team in Norfolk State, only a six match Sample size from last year. I know we sound like broken records here, but I mean those storylines are important in this in this match. I mean, you have Norfolk State trying to find who they are in a game setting, and a team in UNCG who feels like this is a year where they have a lot to improve on. They have a lot to prove. So I I would expect this to teeter totter, Gabe. I I would I did not come into today thinking something was going to be as lop lopsided. No sure. way. No chance. And to your point of you know, and we're kind of saying the same stuff over and over again. The reason why you're saying it's so important is you got to think it's been nearly two calendar years, yeah. and Norfolk State has played seven six. matches. Six yep. matches last year, the match on Tuesday. You're not quite used to being in close situations like this. Yeah, and I feel like this is where you all always go shoulder to shoulder, and 
you see right there, and communication is always a factor too, and to know, hey, who's got my back if I need help? And that's Jenna Wiggs' third ace of the set. She had four aces last weekend in the three matches. She's got seven on the year, and UNCG's two points away. There's Wiggs. Carter on the tap. And they're going to call a double hit on Cross. Oh, a lift. Oh, they call the lift, I think. Yeah. Normally, a if lift. it's a double touch, they do the two, but. The lift on cross, my apologies, and it's 24-21. Well, I mean, I, I'm i going to be honest, Gabe. I, I didn't see it. Um, I mean, Kathy Bullock, I, she has a reason to be frustrated. And I I think I agree with her, Gabe. I don't know. I Maybe it's just because we're up here and I can touch the ceiling of the arena. <laughs> Breen finishes it off. 25-21, UNCG takes set one. And they come back after a little bit of a shaky start. They end the set on a 4-0 run and take set one here inside Fleming Gymnasium. Back for set two next in Greensboro. UNCG takes set one, 25-21. They end the set on a 4-0 run to take it by four points after that first set was tied at 21. Gabe Genovese and Jay Cremato with you on ESPN Plus tonight. Appreciate everyone tuning in. And, and Jake, we were talking in the, in the break a little bit, but would you kind of see in that first set that you liked from the Spartans kind of pulling away late there? Yeah, well, we were talking about it I mean, during the timeout. I mean, UNCG has 16 kills in that first set compared to NSU's eight. I mean, UNCG's 227 attack percentage compared to Norfolk State's 118. That, that obviously stands out quite a bit. I mean, both teams are great blocking teams, but I mean, each team only has one total block apiece. That kind of stood out to me a little bit, but uh, Gray Breen, uh, she was fantastic at the back end of that first set. She's hitting 444 uh, for the match so far. Still a lot, a lot of ball game left, Gabe, but I mean, five kills, nine attempts, just one error. You, I, I would not be shocked if uh, UNCG fed her a little more. Norfolk State kind of a balanced attack thus far. Williams with three kills. Seal and Eichelberger each with two as we're underway here in set two. But you really liked what you saw out of Nicole Rodriguez as well. Apologies. Yeah, no, I, I really did it. <laughs> Not every day you see nine digs in a in one set, you know. So, I mean, even if we go into three, three sets, she's what? Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, do the math, that Gabe. You figure it out. Nine times three would be yeah. 27. 27. Yes. Yeah, there we yes. go. <laughs> We're broadcasters. <laughs> nice little tap over there by Shante Seal. Ties it at one. Let's see if she can get going. That's her third kill of the match. Yeah, we highlighted her because of her 24 kills against Hampton. I mean, 14 digs when she hit 262. I mean, it was her debut with Norfolk State, too. And... When you have a player like her with her resume at Dakota College where she transferred from at the D2 level, when you have a resume like hers, I mean, you, you really get curious to see what she can do on the floor. Wiggs somehow keeps it up. Can they get it over? Wow. Carter does, but she misses long. 2-1 NSU. Wow. Wiggs. Holy cow. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Uh, Heck of an effort from the senior. Yeah, and, and because. And you also hate when an effort like that happens, you hate that the point goes to the other team, but sometimes that's the sport. That serve misses wide off the hand of Seal, and we're tied at two. Wiggs in this match as well, by the way. Five digs, three aces, and it seems like more than that. She's kind of been all over for UNCG. Yeah, it's one of those efforts where, I mean, you you see the performance and you look at the numbers and you kind of turn your head sideways a little bit and you're like, wow, the, you know, the effort she, she's giving out there just doesn't indicate the numbers. Seal a powerful swing off the block and down three to two. NSU with the lead. Yeah, and that should get her attack percentage up above 100. It was 077 before 
Yeah, that gets her up to 154. So one thing, I mean, she's going to get a lot of swings too. So unfortunately, sometimes that hit percentage may not prove uh, how great her arm really is. Breen gets blocked. White on the other side. They're going to say misses wide. I thought there was a tip, but I believe it was the top of the tape. It might have been the top of the tape, yeah. Because I, I, I kind of agree with you there. We saw the, the net bounce a little bit there. 4-2 the NSU lead. White rolls one over, and it falls. Why not? You have four hands in front of you. If you're able to roll it to where no one is in the cross court. But I do... I do like how she did finesse that. Again, we talked to, we talked about her. We hit her, her. We hit on her IQ a lot back in that first set. Showing it off again there. Now she's back to serve. Had nine aces in the three matches last weekend to lead UNCG. Let's see what she comes with here. Seal off the block and out, 5-3 NSU. Yeah, it's off Brittany Wood of UNCG. Man, that was a pretty hard shot to halt. Just missed that end line. Cross to serve for NSU. Across nine assists, a couple of digs tonight. And that one is blocked back by Eichelberger. 6-3, the NSU lead. I mean, NSU nearly had uh, two blocks a set in their loss against Hampton. And I, I told you, I was kind of surprised that, you know, just what, both teams with one block apiece in that first set. I, f I felt like it would be a little bit more of an impact. Maybe that'll change here. White from the back row. Calderon keeps it up. That time it slides past Calderon, and it's 7-3 NSU. Yeah, you feel for the 5-6 uh, sophomore defensive specialist for UNCG. He had that great dive, and then NSU's able to get the point. I, mean, I think this is probably their biggest Biggest lead of the match. Corey Carlin wants a timeout. 7-3 NSU here in set two. We'll be right back inside Fleming Gymnasium. Norfolk State on a 3-0 run and it's 7-3. Norfolk State Spartans over the UNCG Spartans. Gabe Genovese alongside Jake Hermata with you tonight inside Fleming Gymnasium. And we did see this in set one. Norfolk State had a three-point lead for most of that first set, early at least. This mm -hmm. time it's a four-point lead. Can UNCG mount another comeback? We're about to find out. Well, we saw it in the first set. And one would think they could do it again in the second set. But let's see if they call a tip here. Yep. So it misses wide, but the tip of the net gives Norfolk State an 8-3 lead. Well, I was going to say this. I mean, in the, back in that first set to start, UNCG, they weren't hitting negative at all in that first set. Now they're hitting negative 222. They have three attack errors, just one kill. Norfolk State, uh, Nor Norfolk State on the other hand, five kills already in this, in this second set. Cross serves. Calderon receives, and here's White blocked back. And no, they're going to say... No block, it just hit the top of the tape, oh, yeah. so she didn't get it over, and it's 9-3. So not the start you're looking for if you're UNCG, especially after your, your comeback last set. You feel pretty good going into set two, but I feel like NSU had, uh, had other plans. Down the line goes Taylor Robertson for her first kill, 9-4. Yeah, I was going to say, we haven't said Robertson yet at all. 15th kill 
on the year. Robertson played against Eastern Kentucky and Radford, did not play in the App State match. Had 10 kills and three blocks against Eastern Kentucky. Hananier makes some pay for the free ball, 9-5. Yeah, well, bit of an overpass. Bad pass, too, by NSU. You have to make them pay. If they're going to feed that to you. Near three kills. After she had an error early, hitting 286. That's a powerful swing from McRuffin. 10-5, NSU. Yeah, you, you said it. Powerful. I mean, <laughs> not much else to say about that game. Sometimes some swings are just so good and so beautiful looking that can't say much about them. White into the net, 11-5 the NSU lead. And this is where, if you're eighth year head coach Corey Carlin, you've already used one timeout. You, you've only got one more the rest of the set. You're gonna let your girls kind of play it out for a little bit as Robertson converts once again. Yeah, you kind of have to let your squad go out there and figure it out, especially earlier on in the year. And, and that's, that is the beauty of non-conference play. Because obviously, I mean, for, for smaller schools, it's, it's the conference season that matters most. So sometimes you just have to leave your team out there to figure it out, you know, especially um, this early on in the season to see what you're made of, see what you can do. Carter cross court, nothing doing. Near over the middle, got it. 11-7, NSU. Yeah, we've been saying Hannah Near's name, oh, well, I should say you have been saying Hannah Near's name a little more. And I, I feel like someone, she's a junior, one of the leaders on this team. She had 10 kills last weekend. I mean, she was second on UNCG in kills last year as well. I mean, so you're looking for someone like her to step up. Robertson cross court. Wiggs is there for UNCG. Robertson again. We continue. White. Over the middle. McRuffin once again, 12-7. I'll tell you what, Norfolk State, they have a, in, in cross, their freshman setter. She just doesn't look like a freshman setter out there. I mean, I'm sure there, I'm sure there's, there are some minor mistakes that the, the coaching staff will see, but honestly, I'm sure to the general viewer, they, they wouldn't know she's a freshman. That's a nice tip by Near. After a little bit of a miscommunication there from Near and Wiggs, Near kind of off balance, off her back foot, able to find the back corner. Yeah, and now she's getting up there in the kills column as well. She's got five. And we uh, now she's hitting 0.45 at, at you know it. Oh, I'm sorry, 4.44. Excuse me. Wonder how much will wonder, wonder how much she'll take over. She was quiet that first set. Shante Seal comes right back. 13-8, the NSU lead, and we talked about it. Not to hit on it for a third or fourth time, but Seal kind of getting going here, and now up to six kills. Yeah, just her second match with Norfolk State. She's at the D2 level for a little bit. Leads the Spartans in the kills column. She's gonna be a very, really important piece down the stretch for this, uh, this NSU team. I believe, yep, they're gonna call a double there on near and all of a sudden it's back up to six, 14-8. And Corey Carlin wants another timeout. We'll keep it right here as Norfolk State continues to pull away in set two. I mean, Jake, look at the numbers. Eight kills, just one error for Norfolk State here in this second set. Well, I see a team in Norfolk State right now that uh, you kind of let that first set get away from you. So what do you do in set two? Forget about it. Come right back. You've already proven, you know, your first match of the year. And you're down 0-2 to Hampton. You force that match up into five sets. So you go down to that, that first set and you feel like, okay, 
you, you can go one of two ways about that. You can either just lie down and die, or you can come back and punch him even harder. I mean, that's, that's an NSU team that I see right now, the team that's going to come back and punch harder. And for UNCG, we're kind of seeing what we saw early in that first set. Don't quite have their footing. Six kills, five errors. Haven't really been able to get into a rhythm. Yeah, and when Norfolk State had the, the biggest lead of the match, they were up four to begin the second set. I mean, UNCG, they were hitting negative 222. They had three attack errors to start. And, I mean, it's a lot easier sometimes to dig yourself in a hole than it is to get out of the hole. And sure, they were in a hole to begin set one, but I just feel like this is a deeper hole, so, and you hate to dig yourself a deeper and deeper hole to begin each and every set. Here we'll we go. Yeah, we'll see how they respond here, UNCG. Cannoneer says, I'll take it. Well, that's a start, so always after, once you call a timeout, you always want to side out. You always want to side out after your own timeout, because that's the point. You want to stop the other team's run, you want to stop their momentum, you want to get the ball back behind your service line. We'll see if this is the start. Wig serves. Seal cross court. And the joust at the net. Play continues and White misses wide. 15-9 NSU. Yeah, Mandy Garvin's again had a nice up in the back row. And again, it's just one of those things you hate to see great effort, you know, turn into a point for the other team, but that's sport and Got to hand it to her for, keep, for giving her team a chance to, to even get off a good shot like that. McRuffin serves. Breen. 15-10 NSU. We're starting to claw back here. I wonder what was said in that timeout by Corey Carlin to get some energy back into this team. The question is, can you keep momentum up enough? You yeah. Know, you're kind of going back and forth between down five, down six, down down four. You, you want to try to get it into that two or three point range before it gets too late. And that's going to help from Valeria Calderon and Ace. Yeah, those, those always help, Aces. Uh, whatever points you can get behind the line, I mean, even a serve that gets the other team out of, out of system, you can really win a lot of games with your serving game. Should say matches, not games. That one way long. 15 12, UNCG back within three, and they've cut the deficit in half. And I don't want to say deja vu because nothing's really happened. UNCG hasn't taken back the lead, but this mid set lull, we saw two from Norfolk State back in the opening set. Miscommunication on the set from Cross. And it's 15-13 UNCG on a 4-0 run. I was going to say two of those four points. Ace for UNCG, attack error for Norfolk State. And there's another ace from Calderon. Two aces and an NSU attack error. And now it's just a one-point match or one-point set. And Kathy Bullock still not calling timeout. That tells me she might be in the mood of figure it out. I mean, what can she say? Her team got aced twice, and they had and they had an attack error. Calderon serves again. A near ace. Rodriguez sends it over. Can UNCG capitalize? Williams says, "Not today." Sixteen fourteen. Tell you what, that's a big block. I'm not going to say you're up against it here in this second set, but I mean UNCG, all here the they momentum. come, all the momentum. But and, I mean that, that's a big step up block by the redshirt senior. Big spot. Three kills, three digs, an ace, and a block now for Williams. Kind of doing a little bit of everything. But the Spartans are back in it. Down by two. Garvin's from the back row. Williams finds the floor once again, and it's 17-14. Yeah, back-to-back -back volleys. She's come up big like a redshirt senior should. She puts her team back up three. Service error from 
Kayla Brown, 17-15, UNCG back down two. Now we're seeing Taylor Robertson back in for UNCG. She's got a couple nice swings, two kills. Let's see if Kayla White can get anything going behind the service line after mentioned it earlier, but nine aces in three matches last weekend. And we're gonna get a double hit, I believe, called to make it 17-16. UNCG starting to creep up. And I feel like Norfolk State can feel them. And when you can feel someone creeping up on you in the back of your mind, that's, uh, that affects you. But we saw this back in set one. UNCG dug themselves in a little bit of a hole. White serves. Back the other way, Williams dug out by Wiggs. Robertson cross court, and that tip misses wide to tie this thing at 17. It was a good idea from McRuffin. She had the whole left side, but she just missed. And Jenna Wiggs on the up, when she got the dig, she was on her back and did like a backslide, like she wiggled away from her teammate. That was so cool. For the lead, Robertson can't quite convert. Volley stays alive. Robertson gets it to go, and the Spartans take an 18-17 lead. You know, I don't want to say it wouldn't be done, but wow. I mean, UNCG, they did not have a pretty start to the second set, and here they are, back up one. It's only one, but still to, to fight back and dig yourself out of a hole. White misses wide. We're tied at 18, and to your point, if you're UNCG, even with the service error, it's we were down six. Yeah, well, you, you'll take that. Would you rather be even or would you rather be down six? And, uh, and I feel <laughs> like, <laughs> well, okay, it sounds. <laughs> but, I mean, Corey Carlin's clapping over there on the UNCG bench. And, uh, of course, I mean, you've battled back from a six-point deficit. And uh, you've given yourself a chance. It's now a 0-0 zero -zero game. Set, rather. Getting things straightened up at the scores table and now cross to serve. A near ace. White keeps it up with the left hand. And that one falls in. Calderon thought it was going to be out. What a volley by both teams, but Calderon was there and decided to leave it. 19-18 NSU. That's such a tough call. It's 50-50. She was right on the, uh, the sideline there, too. She just wasn't sure. Breen over the middle. Yep. We're tied at 19. Okay, back to you. Got to think. Okay, we're back to we're back to even zero zero here. But this is a lot like the first set. <laughs> the back, the final six points are were nearly an identical yeah an identical look as it, it was in the first set. Norfolk State wasn't up six, but they were up three most of the set. Breen into the strings to make it 20 to 19, but we were tied 21-21 in the first set before UNCG went on a 4-0 run to end it. We'll see what happens here in the final five, six points. McHugh punches it over and gets it to go. That was close. It wasn't a good pass. It looked like it was going over the net. And luckily, UNCG able to, able to improvise that. Gabriella McHugh tonight, 23 assists, five digs, and a couple of kills now. Here she is behind the service line, tied at 20. White keeps it up. Near over the middle, 
Maybe mistimed her jump a little bit there. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was a mistime on the jump or just uh, just not a good set by McHugh. I mean, it could go both ways. 21-20, the NSU lead. Near, got it. The timing was good there. And just like set one, we're tied at 21. Garvin's trots behind the service line. And a great serve from Garvin's that sneaks in and UNCG has a 22-21 lead. Wow. And our line judge didn't, could not decide herself. And I'll tell you what, if if the challenge, if the coaches were able to challenge, I think that would have been, I, I, without a doubt, NSU would have challenged that. I if they had the ability in, to. I think it hit that back line. I think so, too. Your point is it was really close. It was, it was close. It, it was, it, if it did hit that line, it, it was the smallest of smooches that I've probably ever seen. But I, I, I think if the... If NSU could challenge that, that's, a, that's an immediate green card. Immediate green card. Unfortunately, they don't have the option to right now. But who knows? Who knows? Sometimes those challenges can really just change everything. 22-21, the UNCG lead. And all of a sudden, after Norfolk State had a six-point lead over midway through this set, UNCG has stormed back, and if you're Norfolk State, it, it's so hard not to think, ah, uh, here we go again. This just happened. It happened Tuesday where we weren't quite able to fight back. <laughs> you're really tested mentally here late in set two. Yeah, and when you only have, again, we talked about this, when you only have six matches from last year, I mean, you only you do only have one match coming into today too. There are a lot of factors, and you're right. It's the adversity that NSU is facing here. How will they respond? That one just long from Carter, and we're tied at 22. Carter's got a powerful swing, but it's about controlling that swing. And tonight, three kills, three errors. Yeah, they played her well. She's hitting zero now. White. Dump over by Rodriguez. White once again. What a job by Rodriguez to keep it alive. Carter with the tap, nothing doing. Can they keep it up? Yes, they can. But we're going to get an NSU point. They called a double touch on UNCG. Corey Carlin doesn't see it. I wonder, I think they called the double touch after, I'm trying to think of when they did. And I think that's what McHugh. Yeah, Gabriella is, McHugh talked yeah, to the official. Yeah, I, I think that's the answer she's trying to get here is, is who was it on? But we had a critical call too late in set one that decided, I'm not going to say decided that set, but eventually it led to UNCG taking that first set, so. Hunter serves. Over the middle, Carter off the block and down. We're tied at 23. Yeah, and why not feed her over the middle, too? I know she hasn't been as efficient maybe today as she would like, but she came up big when her team needed it to tie the setup at 23. Wiggs is who you want behind the service line if you're UNCG. And 
Talk about a broadcaster's jinx. She misses long there, 24-23. Yeah, Gabe, it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I got to take the blame for but that. But no, I, but what you said was accurate, right? I mean, she has been so good behind the service line. Three aces, and she was incredible last weekend as well. She had five. Set point for NSU. Carter. For the set, Wiggs keeps it up. Can they get it over? Yes, they can. That one down. NSU 25-23, and they tie this thing at one set apiece. We've got a good one here inside Fleming. We'll be back for set three in a few minutes on ESPN+. We've got a good one here in Greensboro. Norfolk State and UNCG tied at one set apiece. UNCG took set one, 25-21. Norfolk State comes back and wins set two, 25-23. Gabe Genovese and Jake Armada here with you tonight on ESPN Plus. And I mean, numbers wise, you look at it, Jake, and everything kind of leans toward UNCG, 10 more kills five more aces, but Norfolk State was much more efficient in that second set. Yeah, and it, back in that second set, it looked like it was going to be all Norfolk State, too. But, I mean, they hit 312 for that set. So, I, you know. And that one yeah, off but, the block and down for Norfolk State to make it one nothing. But back to my point, I... It looked like there was a time where UNCG was, they, they dug themselves in a hole to begin set number two. Didn't look like they were going to come back out of it. However, that second set mirrored that first set quite a bit in the sense that, you know, midway through that set, North Folk State, they started leaning, I'm not going to say lean back a little bit, but they faltered a little bit. UNCG battled back, and we finally saw NSU close out that second set. Um, and I'm sure they were really bummed in that first set, too, when they couldn't close out that first set because they had a pretty good, healthy lead the whole time until the final five points or so. Carter gets that one to go, and we're tied at one. So now I'm curious to see if we're going to get a different narrative here on, like, the first two sets. I mean, what, what's really going to happen here? We're going to see NSU again have a healthy lead up until, again, the up until we hit that 20-point mark, or will UNCG finally have a, a set where they start out hot? Calderon serves. McHugh the dump. Heads up play. Yeah, for sure. And we it was you who said this earlier. She picks her she picks her her, her moments. And again, that was another moment. She's two for two on those on picking her moments right now. White. Hammers one home, 3-1 UNCG. I mean, the sideline was open. She just ripped it. And when you have court vision like that and you're able to hit line and hit line accurately, Nearly all day. Impossible to stop. All day. Calderon misses long, 3-2. After a 3-0 spurt by UNCG. Kayla Brown back to serve for NSU. White, that time blocked back. Gray Breen rejected. Tied at three here in set three. Yeah, that's a good block. I mean, NSU, if there, if there is one statistical column that they're winning right now, it is that blocks column. They had four before that as a team. And they were impressive, too, last weekend. I mean, they were a little under two blocks a set, and their five-set loss to Hampton last weekend. They, got a good, they have a great unit up front. White ends up converting 4-3. So this is something we haven't seen today. Teeter-totter early. We've seen NSU get out to a healthy lead to start both sets. 
And to your point, at least in my opinion, that would probably lean UNCG's way because UNCG has gained momentum and played better as they've gone on in the set. So yeah. instead of being down three, four, five points early, eh, you keep it around an even set. Mm -hmm. If UNCG can start playing well mid to late set again, they're going to pull away. Yeah. Then you also wonder if you're NSU, how are you going to how are you going to navigate these moments? Oh, wow. They're going to call a violation there. <laughs> Calderon, what a what an up in the back. She didn't think it hit the ground. No. Either way, tied up at four. Cross to serve. 19 assists, three digs tonight for Karis Cross. And Calderon struggles with it, 5-4 NSU. It's only their second ace, NSU's. That time Calderon handles it. Breen goes cross court, nothing doing. Blocked back by Breen, so she can't get the kill. She gets the block, and we're tied at five. Yeah, what a stuff. I mean, for a unit that last weekend averaged over two blocks per set. I mean, that's a <laughs> that's a tough blocking unit to get around as if you're a, an offense trying to score on UNCG. Hannah Near. Robertson. Got it to go. 6 5. Yeah, Shante Seal. She tried over there on the score. Said, ooh, she's a little limp. Near her bench. She'll walk that off, though. You appreciate the effort there. But, like you said, I mean, UNCG back out in front. 6-5 the UNCG lead. Gray Breen to serve once again. Breen keeps it up. Robertson floats it over, but long. We're tied at six. I was complimenting UNCG's blocking unit, but they only have two, two blocks as a team compared to NSU's five. So they really haven't been as much of a factor, which I thought they would be coming into this one. But your point at, at Robertson. Just her first it, error. Yeah, just her first error today. So she was five for eight without an error before that. Hananir rejected by Seal. 7-6 NSU. Yeah, Nier had four hands in front of her. It's tough to get around sometimes. Robertson. Eichelberger slings one home, 8-6. Yeah, for a fifth time today, Eichelberger. And 14 attempts, too. Just one error for her today. McHugh can't quite earn the point. And then she flushes one home, 8-7. Yeah, there were a lot of, there's, I'm not going to say miscommunication, but on, on NSU's side of the net, there was just, I don't want to say chaos. I don't, yeah, I don't want to say chaos either, but everybody was all over the place, so why not just shove one right down the defense's throat? And <laughs> that's what UNCG did right there. McHugh to serve. They're going to replay the point. For what reason, though, I don't know. It's one negative to being up here and not courtside. Yeah. 
I mean, it happens. We're not going to get the official ruling, but we will replay that point. And I do like the view from up here. You see a lot, that including one, that kill. That one goes NSU's way, 9-7. You know, Williams with another big swing for NSU. Seven kills, no errors, 25 attacks. 280 hit percentage. I'd say that's a uh, pretty decent night. Go along with five digs as well. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, NSU kind of pulling away here early in set three, 10-7. Yeah, they only have one attack error in this, in this third set. And Eichelberger getting the team's fourth kill in this set. Yeah, NSU's playing, playing good in this third set. We'll see if, but then again, we've had that. Where's that mid-set lull going to come? We've seen it the last two sets. 11-7 the NSU lead, and there's a timeout for Corey Carlin. It's all Norfolk State as of late in this one, 11-7. The NSU lead over UNCG. We'll be back for more of set three next from Fleming Gymnasium. Norfolk State on a 3-0 run to take an 11-7 lead here in set three. The match tied at one set apiece. UNCG one set one, 25-21. Norfolk State came back, took set two, 25-23. And there's a solo block from Gracie Teeter to make it 12-7 NSU. Yeah, she came into today without a solo block in the first loss of the year. I should say the first match of the year and the loss to Hampton. But she's come out in this one, Gabe, and she has gotten two big solo stuffs. And, I mean, the first one coming earlier on in this matchup, but that was a big spot for her. Carter gets rejected, but keeps it up. Robertson finally finds the floor. Her sixth kill, and it's 12-8 NSU. Yeah, that'll finally get UNCG back up above zero in their hit percentage this set. I mean, we've talked about it. Their offense to start start a lot of these sets has just not <laughs> not been the best, and especially a team that. You know, last week, and they hit 231. They just not gotten out to great starts. And it Wiggs continues. Wiggs couldn't handle it off the deflection, and it's 13-8 NSU. Right around now, though, is when UNCG normally, they, they get that mid-set timeout. Finds a little they, bit and, they, and then they find their groove after that. That serve long, 13-9. And I will say it's been led by either Jenna Wiggs behind the service line right. or Valeria Calderon had a good service run mm -hmm. as well. Let's see if Wiggs can do it again. And in that second set too, I mean, NSU, they gifted some points to UNCG to kind of allow them to find their groove. NSU can't get it over, 13-10. Yeah, Seals fourth attack error of the night in 22 attempts. Another error, this time from Nicole Rodriguez. UNCG back within two, 13-11. Back-to-back -back errors may be all it takes for UNCG to come back and tie this thing. They just need two more points. Breen did enough to keep it up. Carter goes cross court and can't convert. From the back row, Rachel Williams a makes it 14-11. It's a tough spot to score in, too, I feel like. I mean, that far away from the net, even behind the attack line, to score from there, I mean, you don't see that a lot. Ends a 3-0 run for UNCG. McRuffin to serve. Williams still errorless. Eight kills and 29 attempts. 
She misses wide, 14-12. Calderon to serve. And a bad set leads to a UNCG point, 14-13. I'm not gonna say this set has mirrored the previous two sets, but in a way it has. I mean, a slow start for UNCG, Norfolk State, a little bit of a mid-set lull allowing UNCG to come back into this. What a save by Cross to get that over. From the back row seal, off a deflection, 15-13 NSU. That point, Based on effort alone, should have went NSU's way. I mean, that to keep that volley alive for a second didn't even look like it was going to go NSU's way at all, but it did. I was about to say it was an ace hey, for Calderon. Right? It was a near ace. Brown serves off the top of the tape and back on the NSU side to make it 15-14. And it kind of goes back to my point talking about NSU here as uh, Robertson comes back in for UNCG, but I mean, even in the first couple of volleys, you could just see the the grit from Norfolk State to start this. I mean, bodies flying everywhere and they just giving it all out on the, just putting it all out there and even going near nearly in the stands for, for balls and stuff. Off to block and down for Rachel Williams, who has nine kills and no errors. NSU leads 16-14. Williams now, along with those nine kills, five digs hitting 267. Yeah, so she had nine kills in the five-set loss to Hampton, eight errors. It's way more efficient today. I mean, she hit just 0-1-9 in the season opener for Norfolk State, and here she is, nine kills, no errors. Robertson answers right back. UNCG within one, 16-15. And Robertson's got seven kills to go along with just two errors, hitting 385. Yeah, she didn't play last year, but uh, I mean, obviously now she is this year, but 15 kills last weekend, including 10 against uh, Eastern Kentucky. She can swing it. And the error off the hand of McRuffin ties this set at 16. Wow, and we're tied just like that after UNCG again. Another slow start. Here we are even again. Just off the fingertips wrong of McRuffin. Gray Breen's done a little bit of everything tonight. She serves here. Calderon keeps it up. Williams. Got it, 17-16, and Williams is the queen of the court right now. She's got 10 kills. Yeah, she. I mean, we can harp on her all night. I'm not sure if I like the decision by McHugh to dump there. Maybe just keep it on your side of the net and try and set something up. It was the one time where, I mean, one of her spots she picked I didn't like. Robertson, nothing doing. Williams couldn't get it over. We're tied at 17. It's one of those things where, you know, you want to get it over enough but not enough, but, you know. Just didn't put the right touch on it. Yeah, it, you think about the little thing, you think about little things too much to where you make a mistake, and I think that's that's what it was. And, you know, she's smiling right now to, to her teammates out on the floor, and, and they all know it too. Sometimes you do too much when you want to do too little or just enough, if that makes sense. Sure. <laughs> we'll go with that. Robertson dug out by Williams. What a block from Carter and Near. White from the back row rolls one over.
Robertson. Williams is there again. UNCG trying to say they didn't touch it. Instead, the volley continues and Seal finishes it off. Yeah, you see uh, Corey Carlin holding up the number four, me indicating four hits. I don't know. I mean, it was close. I think he, yeah, he wanted, he wanted four hits called on Norfolk State, but then that call didn't go his way. Rodriguez serves. Carter. Brings the thunder. We're tied at 18. Yeah, now I'm waiting for the lightning, Gabe. Look out. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. I, that, I, what, I mean, what can you say? That, 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 You're not it, stopping it. If you come here to watch strikes like that, you just got your money's worth. Not to say you've already got your money's worth. I mean, we're tied one set apiece. Look at this third set. It's one point off. Over the middle. Near gets the block. And it's a 19-18 UNCG lead. Yeah, and a blocking unit, too, for UNCG. That's been kind of quiet today. I mean, three total blocks. NSU's got eight. I mean, UNCG had 15 total blocks in that uh, five-set loss to EKU last weekend. Another block from Carter and Near. And UNCG with a two-point lead. There it is. There's your brigade at the net, giving you a two-point lead. Can UNCG hold on to it? Garvin serves over the middle. Carter, got it, 21-18. A 4-0 run for UNCG. Kathy Bullock still not going to call a timeout. I thought she was going to right there. She got off the bench. Garvin's keeps it alive but sends it over. Carter. Oh, net violation. On Gracie Teeter, number nine. 22-18, and there's the timeout from third-year head coach Kathy Bullock. 22-18 UNCG on a 5-0 run. Three points away from closing out this third set. Yeah, and you can feel it too. The crowd's starting to get into it here. And it a good crowd on hand too, spaced out. But you feel you feel the energy leaning to UNCG, and uh, and again, <laughs> I feel like a broken record, Gabe. Every time I say this, but this mirrors sets one and two, where UNCG, they're the first part, the first portion of the set. It just does. They they just look completely different end of sets than they do the beginning of the sets. And it, I, I'm not saying that. That's a bad thing, right? At the end of the day, all that matters is that you come out on top. But, you know, maybe you don't want to start out on the you bottom. You might not want to create the habit of exactly. falling behind four or five points. Exactly. Set, but it's good to know that your team can face adversity when things aren't going right and you're able to come back like this. But you almost got to chuckle. The scoreboard has <laughs> hit eh, 13, 14 points, and UNCG has just been like, okay, okay. Let, let's start playing some volleyball now. Yeah. It's like they want to start, you know, down five points to begin every set. You know, nobody really wants to do that, but hey, if it gets you the win, it gets you the win, right? Garvin stays behind the service line, trying to close out this third set. Tied at one set apiece for the match. Good swing from Seal. It was out, but a deflection, and it's 22-19. Yeah, she's got a pretty tough, she's got a pretty high vertical, too. Every time she jumps, she gets up. But 
Also, if you're NSU, that's who you go to to silence the gym. Just like the gym's a little silent now. Build some energy on your side of the net. See if they can build off of it. White. Got it. 23-19. Yeah, couldn't close the block there. Cross. Tough spot for her, though, on that pin. Especially when the shot's off your hand and it hits the, uh, the antenna. Wiggs with a good serve. And White went up to crush that thing, but I think she let it go because she thought it was out. Yeah, she thought the overpass was out, so she didn't touch it. <laughs> and lo and behold, it hits the sideline, and that's a kill. 23-20. to 20. It may not come back to haunt them. We'll see. There's an ace for McRuffin. It could. With a little shimmy afterward, McRuffin fired up, and it's 23-21 UNCG. A timeout for Corey Carlin now. Yeah, gather your thoughts here, especially when UNCG's siding out nearly 60% of the time. So, but we were talking about momentum and how clearly it was on UNCG's side going into that NSU timeout a moment ago. But, I mean, you still saw Norfolk State, they don't, they, they weren't lying down. They weren't rolling over to die. I mean, you, you saw them dancing along to the music here, They're, the end of their bench, you know, swaying back and forth to, uh, to, to the song here in the arena. We, we, we know they're gritty. We know they can come back because of the whole, because of the Hampton match last weekend. They were down 0-2. They forced, you know, that match of, in, into five sets. So, you know, they're just not going to roll over and die. And that's good. Few of the numbers here, UNCG hitting 189 for the match, Norfolk State hitting just 167. In this third set, UNCG 13 kills, six errors, hitting 194. Norfolk State 12 kills, seven errors, hitting 116. Fairly even here in set three. Yeah, and honestly, I think this is one of the lowest um, attack percentages that Norfolk State has had throughout the match. I mean, I think in the first two sets, they, they were, especially in the second set for sure, they were, they were much higher than 116. McRuffin to serve. Garvins has trouble with it. Teeter makes her pay, and it's 23-22. I mean, perfect opportunity. They hand it, they spoon fed her that one. Ruffin serves once again. Carter with a huge point for UNCG to make it 24-22. Yeah, around the block. She aimed that well. See if UNCG can close and regain this mat regain this match lead. Calderon with two aces tonight. And uh, we're going to get a timeout. Looked like Kathy Bullock wasn't going to call the timeout. Yeah, and she's talking with Ky uh, Kyla Hunter on the sideline right now. And Hunter was the one who last made contact with the shot from Carter of UNCG. So just a little bit of a coaching moment there for, uh, for NSU. But you have to stand tall here. Your back's up against the wall. What are you going to do? Then again, we know we know they can fight back. So even if they do drop this set, I honestly would not be surprised if we saw another NSU hot start in set four. I don't want to go there right now, but it it feels like this might be a five setter. Oh, you're gonna go there already? I, I, mean, I wasn't gonna say it, but at with, least on record. <laughs> <laughs> with, with the way that this match is gone. Would you expect anything else tonight? And you know what? You're seeing two teams right now that are just throwing haymakers at each other, and I love it. This is, and this is what we've missed. Granted, we now there was a spring season last year, but last year didn't really feel like the full, full thing. Full, the full, yeah, right. And playing every weekend. Now, now we're back, and and we're seeing the, the we're seeing two teams with with a lot of edge, and here they are just. Going back and forth, and 
Let's play 10 sets. Actually, it would be 11, wouldn't it? What? Breen finishes off set three. 25-22. UNCG takes set three and the crowd erupts here inside Fleming Gymnasium. Two sets to one. The Spartan lead. We'll be right back for set four inside Fleming Gymnasium. A big third set win for UNCG, 25-22, gives them a two set to one lead over Norfolk State. UNCG trying to close it out here in set four. 25-21, UNCG took set one. Norfolk State battled back to take set two, 25-23. And then UNCG wins set three, 25-22. Gabe Genovese alongside Jake Armato with you tonight. And it's been a really exciting match all night long, Jake. Yeah, it really has. And we've seen a lot of, we've seen the same trend throughout this whole match where UNCG off to slow starts and sets, that mid-set lull, and then UNCG the last, two out of the last three sets, they've come back to close it. Norfolk Stick on the other hand, when they lost that first set, they got off to a hot start in set two. They did win that set. So now I'm curious to see how set four goes for, uh, for the Spartans of NSU. Will it? mirror that second set or will we see what we saw last set where UNCG comes back and they close things white hammers one down one nothing UNCG yeah talk about hammering one down she threw the hammer down I know we highlighted her in pregame we talked about her I mean nine kills her and Jocelyn Carter but wow 40 attempts now for white whoo Getting up there. Over the middle, McRuffin says, anything you can do, I can do better. That was just as powerful, 1-1. One, one. I mean, if you can get your team on the board to start after taking a shot like that from UNCG, I do not expect NSU to just roll over and die here. This team is way too gritty for that. And <laughs> we saw that to begin this match. I mean, just the, the way that they throw themselves all over the floor to dig out shots and stuff. Wow. The line judge couldn't quite make mm. up his mind again, but either way, there was a touch, and it's a UNCG play. You know, yeah, when you see a line judge, if, if they're really on the edge like that, then it was close. It was, it was probably something 50-50, and the line judge, just, he did pat himself on the uh, the chest there. So, you know, my my fault for not having the, the final, you know, having the indifference that I did. Catarone served misses long, and we're tied at two here in set four. But the energy in here is picking up a little bit too. I mean, with each and every point, this crowd just little, little bit more Especially and more. Yeah, set. yeah. Brown serves. White scorches one, three two. Yeah, little, little, you said that right, scorched it. I mean, there's a little smoke hanging above the net right now, too. It's <laughs> that one coming off her hand. Kind of smell it up here in the rafters. It's burning in here. Yeah, it is. I don't know how many people are going to be in the mood for our <laughs> jokes tonight. No. <laughs> this match is too close for that. White serves. Wiggs is there for UNCG. Robertson now blocked back. We're tied at three thanks to Kendra McRuffin who had the powerful kill and now a block of her own. Yeah, Taylor Eichelberger was also right next to her on that block too. And I mean, we, we mentioned both of these teams have really good fronts. Call them a brigade earlier. I mean, that's essentially what they are. Tough to get around sometimes soon. Even when they don't get the block off, I mean, still, when you see four tough hands in front of you, it's it, it's hard. Calderon kept it up. Robertson puts it over, but wide, and it's a 4-3 NSU lead. Yeah, Robertson's been efficient tonight, too. I mean, eight kills, 
18 attempts, it's just her fourth error. She was up to 294 before that shot. We mentioned she could swing it. She had 10 kills against Eastern Kentucky. Here she is again, this time has to just tap it over. NSU the other way, McRuffin has to tap, but that one falls and it's 5-3. Yeah, she underhanded that one too. Not the best pass, but she made it what it was, right? Sometimes you just gotta make with what you got. She did there, she turned it into a point. McRuffin, six kills to go along with just one error hitting 556. Robertson blocked back. 6-3, the Spartans of NSU in the lead thanks to Cross. Yeah, I mean I know she's been put in a tough blocking situation a couple times previously, but there she got a, a block to close and she didn't have a, the best pass Earlier on in that volley, obviously didn't let it get to her. This blocking unit for NSU, 10 team blocks. Whew. Brittany Wood off the block. There's another one for Cross. McHugh picks her spot correctly that time, and it's 6-4 NSU, UNCG back within two. Yeah, finessing off the hands of McRuffin for NSU. Sometimes when you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation, if you're the attacker, you can plan it just right off the blocker's hands to get it down to the deck, which she did. That one finds the floor, 7-4 the NSU lead. Real quickly on McHugh, 39 assists, 10 digs, five kills. She's got her third double-double in four matches and five kills to go along with it. You'll take that from your setter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, right? Uh, I'm not gonna disagree with you on that. That would just be wrong. <laughs> Seven five, UNCG back within two after that shot misses long, and here's McHugh behind the service line now. But I mean, and, and that's what you like to see from your setter too, knowing that setting in general is just, it, it's really hard to, I mean, to the way setters can pinpoint passes to me is a lot of the times it's just incredible. But to know too that you have a, a setter who is also a fantastic defender, a good blocker, didn't get the dig there, but still, I mean, that was a tough shot to defend anyway. 8 5 Norfolk State. And McHugh went down with a knee injury about midway through the spring season, and, and it was a big blow to this UNCG team. I'll never forget one of my first chats with Corey Carlin early last season. Unfortunately, we didn't get to talk to Corey Carlin before the match today, but one of my early chats with him last season, he just flat out said, this offense is gonna go how Gabby McHugh goes. She's that important to what this team does. And she's shown it today, but NSU with a 9-5 lead here in set four. Timeout for Corey Carlin and company, and we'll go to break. Be right back from Fleming Gymnasium. Well, the theme of the night is back. Norfolk State has an early lead here in set four, nine to five. They have had a lead of four or more points in every set tonight, as that one goes UNCG's way, make it nine six. And I slightly correct myself there. Their lead was as big as three for most of the first set, but the point stands, they've had an early lead in every set, yet it's UNCG up two sets to one. Trying to close out this match, but they've got some work to do. Garvin's misses long, 10-6, the Spartans of NSU. Yeah, we were talking about McHugh before we went to break and how much, you know, when, she, when, you, when your setter goes down with an injury of any kind and they miss significant time, I mean, your setter's your floor general. You know, they're, they're commanding a lot of the offense too, and Talking about her having a double double, and you know last year and how unfortunate it was. It was that she went down and missed time, but I'll tell you what, the amount of double doubles she's had in the short amount of time says a lot. Good block there from Teeter and Eichelberger. 11-6, the Norfolk State lead here in set four. It's been the theme of the night. <laughs> we sound like broken records, Gabe, but. 
we're saying what we're seeing. And I mean, that's the big storyline of this whole entire match. Cross serves near off balance. And that one finds the floor for Michael Berger. They're doubling up UNCG 12-6 here in set four. And another timeout for Corey Carlin. So he's used both his timeouts quickly, kind of saying, hey, we either got to get this under control now or we're just going to play out the rest of this set and, and go to set five. Well, and, and while we're talking about themes and, and you know, this mirroring that of what occurred earlier on, and I'm sure people at home know what I'm going to say here, and you're know, you know what I'm going to say here. This reminds me a lot of the second set where NSU gives up that first set lead, UNCG takes it, and Norfolk State, here they are, fourth set with the, with the lead, doubling up UNCG. And what does UNCG do? They call, they, they burn both timeouts, and uh, they made that second set interesting. Will that happen again? I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I gotta, if you're a betting person, you may think that. I'm not because, you know, I just don't have money to throw away. But... <laughs> Will, will that happen again? Is where I'm is what I'm saying, and, and that's my point here. And and I'm wondering that. I'm a curious person. What's gonna what? What is this back half of this fourth set gonna look like? You know, that's we've seen you and CG do it, so it's not it's not entirely out of question. And the point you're getting as not getting at is not only have we seen them do it once or twice, we've seen them do it in all three sets tonight. Yes, and the one set in which they couldn't do it, they still battled back, I believe, from a six-point. Six, point six yep. yep, it was six. Hananier over the middle. They do have to side out here. Garvin sends it over. Teeter gets it over, but UNCG keeps it alive, and Mir finishes the point, 12-7. Yeah, that's the sign out you needed to, to build some, some kind of momentum to claw your way back here and, and start putting together some runs. Who to go to then Hannah Near nine kills now for her. Nine kills, just two errors for Near tonight after not having more than seven in the three matches last weekend. Green over the middle, rolls off the top of the tape and down, 12 to eight, Spartans of UNCG back within four. Yeah, there was a critical up by Jocelyn Carter during that volley, I mean, she got it up with her elbow, it looked like, to uh, to keep the volley alive for her uh, UNCG Spartans, and lo and behold, it winds up into points in the map. Wiggs with her fourth ace of the night. She had four aces in the three matches last weekend. She's got four tonight. And UNCG back with him three, 12 to nine. That's crazy. I mean, she's who you want behind the service line for sure. It's a 3-0 spurt for UNCG. Yeah, five all last weekend, four tonight, nine total now. Wow. That one long, was there a touch? No, there wasn't, and it's four straight for UNCG to make it 12-10, only down by two. Yeah, we know Eichelberger has a, has a strong arm, a little too strong there. Bad set, can the Spartans take advantage? Carter, got it, 12-11. Wow. And here I, here I am, I'm going to say it again, but back in that second set when UNCG was down six, called timeout, they put together a run to get us in the same exact situation here. Down by one, and they've made this a ball game again. And there's the timeout from Kathy Bullock. The exact scenario in set two was 15-9. It was 12-6 here in set four. But to your point, it was 15-9, and UNCG came back to eventually tie it at 17. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's just strange how all this is playing out 
in the exact, it, the exact same <laughs> way every set. It, it really is, and I don't know. I don't think I've really ever seen this before. I mean, I know I, I've walked this earth for a limited, a little bit limited amount of time, but it's just weird. That's I've, what I was gonna say. You know, it happens. I would say fairly often where you might see it in the first couple sets or, or mm -hmm. in two of the sets throughout a night. But yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen for four straight sets the ex nearly the exact same thing happen all night long, and yet here we are. And I, I don't know what that attests to. I think it's just. It's uh, there are some things in sports you just re you you really just can't explain and I mean in some I was gonna say we can hypothetically uh, yeah. guess all we want yeah and, and, and I'm sure if we even ask the coaches be like hey what was up with the beginning of the sets they I'm sure would just shrug their shoulder and say technically I can tell you what's what what's going on but why it's always happening I have no idea. Wig serves. And a huge block by Carter and Breen. Breen points at Carter like, yep, that one was you, and we're tied at 12. Stood her up, Gabe. Stood her up. Flexed a little bit. Ties the game. Ties the setup. <laughs> huge. Tied at 12. Wiggs a near ace. Can UNCG take advantage? Carter. Yep. A 7-0 run for UNCG, and they've got a 13-12 lead. Carter's on fire. Jocelyn Carter, 12 kills. She leads everybody tonight. Here's White, cross court, kept up by Rodriguez. White again, Rodriguez again. Carter gets blocked and that one goes NSU's way. We're tied at 13. <laughs> Rodriguez is a shovel, man. <laughs> wow. Those are two tough shots that she uh, scooped out of there. To even the setback up. I, I liked her from the start and she is She's something in that libero jersey. Garvin's handles a hot serve. Breen over the middle, nothing doing. Rodriguez, a little punch over. Williams. Converts 13 kills, no errors tonight for Rachel Williams and Norfolk State back on top 14 13. You know, I'm not sure if you know, she's getting close to a career high or not. I and mean, with only six matches last year, she compiled 41 kills. But I mean, double digit kills for the first time at least this year, season high for her. Breen punches one down. We're tied at 14. Breen's been fun to watch over the middle. I mean, she's sitting over 300. Now joins the uh, double-digit double digit kill column. She's having a heck of a match. 10 kills, just three errors. You said it, hitting 350. <laughs> Calderon serves. Calderon kept it up. McHugh puts it over. And McHugh somehow gives UNCG the lead 15-14. Hey, whatever works. Whatever gets you that point to get one up on your opponent. Again, never has to look pretty. Nothing in the rule book that says that. Calderon, a good line drive serve. What a job by McHugh to get a left hand on that. White, nothing doing. Rodriguez, the dive. Garvin's digs it out. 
White off the block and down. 16-14 UNCG. NSU's pointing to the back uh, line judge saying he called it out, he called it out, but the up, the up ref said no. There's a tip at the net, so point for the Spartans out of Greensboro. Catarone into the string, 16-15. Again, it was 12-6 NSU, so 10 of the last 13 points have gone UNCG's way and they lead by one here in set four, trying to close out this match. Yeah, I don't know if what goes on in some of those timeouts for Corey Carlin, but that's always when the, the flip is switched. He's saying the magic words tonight. Oh. Breen. Williams lofts one over. Breen again. White, yep, 17-15. And in this small gym environment, even with the kind of limited spaced out crowd here, it's getting loud here inside Fleming. Yeah, and, th and this is what we missed a lot of last year, you know, just the, the environment and, uh, and what the environment can do for the athletes out on the floor and what they can feel down there too. It's good to have this back. Miscommunication after the block and the Spartans have their largest lead of this fourth set, 18-15 the UNCG lead. Yeah, good stuff by Brittany Wood near the pin. Started with her there. A near ace for White. Wood puts it over. Calderon kept it up. McHugh gets it over. From the back row, White. And that one way long off the hand of Rachel Williams. <laughs> Kudos to Calderon, man. Wow. Sending it over near the bench, and you know, UNCG able to get it back over. This team was down six in this fourth set, and here they are, up four. White into the strings, makes it 19-16 UNCG. Valeria Calderon did not play last weekend. She had five digs total last year. She's got eight digs along with two aces tonight. Tip your cap to her. Yeah, talk about someone who's proved herself in this matchup. And then also, of course, NSU and the scouting report, of course they would go for her. Not having a lot of experience. NSU back-to-back -back points to get it back within two. 1917, the UNCG lead. Kyla Hunter serves. Breen off the block. White keeps it up, and now Wood. Did it get deflected? Yes, it did. UNCG regains the three-point lead, 20 to 17. I mean, they're, I hate to say they're, uh, you really can't call them a second half team, but a back portion of the set team, that's what they are. At least that's what they've shown in this match. McRuffin says not so fast, 20 to 18. Yeah, keeping her team in it, McRuffin. I mean, they're still down two. This team's been gritty all night. They've been a pest. A lot of times they just haven't gone away. I'm sure when UNCG <laughs> would like them to. This team just keeps fighting in NSU. Williams serves. Wiggs had to lunge for it. From the back row, Williams. Near over the middle. 
Williams misses wide, 21-18. Yeah, NSU signaling for a touch at the net. Kyla Hunter was the one for Norfolk State that was signaling a, a touch at the net, but no one paid her any attention. Call stands. McHugh serves. She's got 48 assists, 12 digs tonight. Wow. And they're gonna get a, they're gonna get her for a double touch there. 21-19. Yeah. yeah, that one was obvious. I mean, she might get up to 50 assists in a four setter. <laughs> I'd say that's uh, really good. Yeah. <laughs> her career high 57 back when she was a freshman against Incarnate Word. Somehow, some way, Shante Seal got that to fall and it's 21-20 UNCG, NSU back within one. I mean, if you find a way to get it down, you find a way to get it down. And that's also sometimes the name of the game. Steele now 10 kills, 20 digs tonight. A double-double for her. There she is again. Shante Seal, who had 24 kills and 14 digs in their first match of the season, now has 11 kills and 20 digs here in match number two for Norfolk State, and we're tied at 21. White from the back row. Williams finishes it. 22-21 NSU. Oh. Oh, I, mi I missed it. I missed the call, unfortunately. I did as well. That is the negative to looking down at the stat monitor yeah. right after the point. Well, now I'm starting to think if she was ab above the net when she attacked behind the attack line. I would guess that's the call that makes the most sense. So instead of 22-21, NSU, it's 22-21 UNCG, but make it 22-22 yeah, with the block. Yeah, they get that point back, but still. I wish I caught the, uh, the official call there. I was <laughs> By the way, th this is getting intense down the stretch. As it's been all night long. McRuffin to serve. Wiggs receives. Oh. And Kayla White finishes her 13th kill of the night to make it 23-22. Wiggs had a heck of a serve receive in the back row. I mean, jump serves are never easy to field. But, boy, she had a great read on that and a beautiful up to set up that kill. Here she is behind the service line with four aces already tonight. Wiggs, by the way, also 17 digs. Third time in four matches she's been in double figures in the dig column. Yeah, she's impressive. The senior last year, 3.42 digs per set, led the team. Ten times in 17 matches, Wiggs was over 10 digs. And it's already three times in four matches this year, so we get a timeout <laughs> for Kathy Bullock and company. Yeah, three times in four matches, you're on pace to have a pretty good, uh, pretty good year. Pretty good senior season. Yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. And that too. I mean, that, and, and that's the libero in general. I mean, that, that, that's her job. And I mean, to be to be quick on your feet, to get a lot of those hard shots, and to I'm trying to find uh, the words to describe it. But I mean, to I mean, to, now I. I had called Nicole Rodriguez a human shovel, but like that, that, I mean, that's your job. You have to be able to, to feel a lot of those tough shots. So, and also on, on top of things, to be a senior, you have to be a leader out there too. And that's always sometimes not the easiest thing in the world. 
uh, to get everybody to, to, to look to you to lead the team and, and have those qualities as well, which I'm sure uh, Jen Jenna Wiggs is. UNCG two points away from closing out this match and improving to three and one on this season. I know UNCG has had uh, some rough seasons in the past, but I mean a three and one start. And but I mean they're 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 in the friendly confines of uh, of their own arena, so hopefully they can add a little more wins to that total. I will say, you say the friendly confines. Fleming Gymnasium was not so friendly to UNCG in the spring. They were 0-9 inside this building in the spring. As that one, I believe, was all tape. It was 24-22. UNCG is a point away from their first home victory in nearly two years. Wig serves. Can they keep it up? Yeah, but they can't get it over. 24-23, NSU back within one. Yeah, UNCG laughing at each other. I mean, sometimes that's that's one of the hardest balls. But when you know when you hit it backwards and you're trying to get it back to go forwards with just two shots, that's tough to do. Seal to serve. Way long, and that'll do it. 25-23, UNCG takes set four. They take the match three sets to one. And the Spartans of UNCG get their first home victory since November 9th of 2019 when they beat Chattanooga in four sets. It was a gutty, gutty four-set victory tonight, Jay Kermata. And they take set four, 25-23. Well, I'll tell you what, Gabriel Genovese, I mean, in that current set, their hit percentage was only 137. But, I mean, they held Northfolk State to just an 0-4-3 hit percentage. And, I mean, their defense was just as critical as their offense in that final set. But kudos to UNCG, you know. And I don't want to take anything away from NSU. They put forth a tremendous effort as well. But, I mean, when you start sets the way UNCG did and you're able to dig yourself out of a hole, in three of the four sets, that says a lot about your team. Again, one more time. UNCG 25-21 in set one. They lose set two 23-25, and then they take set three 25-22, and win a close set four 25-23. It was close throughout but they get their first home victory since November of 2019, and they improve to three and one on the season. Any final thoughts, my friend? No, I, I mean, honestly, I can't wait to see what UNCG does the rest of the year. I mean, it's same with Norfolk State. I mean, you, you have two teams that feel like they have a lot to prove moving forward, and if you're NSU, don't hang your head on this. I mean, UNCG's, a, they're, they're a tough ball club, and um, can't wait to keep tabs on them and see what they do th this year. I feel like, they, I feel like they, they should be really proud of themselves moving forward. Again, this part of the Spartan Aggie Tournament, so it's these two teams, American and North Carolina A&T, part of this tournament this weekend. So UNCG will play American at 11 a.m. tomorrow and then play North Carolina A&T at 7.30. Norfolk State plays North Carolina A&T at 11 and then plays American at 5 o'clock tomorrow. Jay Kamato will be on your call tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. for UNCG and American. Thanks for joining me today, my friend. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks for letting me crash the party. Appreciate our entire crew tonight for getting us on the air. And again, it's UNCG taking this one 3-1 over Nor Norfolk State. So long from Fleming Gymnasium. Well, the theme of the night is back. Norfolk State has an early lead here in set four, nine to five. They have had a lead of four or more points in every set tonight as that one goes UNCG's way, make it nine, six. And I slightly correct myself there. Their lead was as big as three for most of the first set, but the point stands, they've had an early lead in every set, yet it's UNCG up two sets to one. 
trying to close out this match, but they've got some work to do. Garvin's misses long, 10-6, the Spartans of NSU. Yeah, we were talking about McHugh before we went to break and how much, you know, when, she, when, you, when your setter goes down with an injury of any kind and they miss significant time, I mean, your setter's your floor general. You know, they're, they're commanding a lot of the offense too and talking about her having a double-double and, you know, last year and how unfortunate it was, it was that she went down and missed time. But I'll tell you what, the amount of double-doubles she's had in the short amount of time says a lot. Good block there from Teeter and Eichelberger. 11-6, the Norfolk State lead here in set four. It's been the theme of the night. <laughs> we sound like broken records, Gabe, but we're saying what we're seeing. And I mean, that's the big storyline of this whole entire match. Cross serves near off balance. And that one finds the floor for Michael Berger. They're doubling up UNCG 12-6 here in set four. And another timeout for Corey Carlin. So he's used both his timeouts quickly, kind of saying, hey, we either got to get this under control now or we're just going to play out the rest of this set and, and go to set five. Well, and, and while we're talking about themes and, and you know, this mirroring that of what occurred earlier on, and I'm sure people at home know what I'm going to say here, and you know, you know what I'm going to say here. This reminds me a lot of the second set where NSU gives up that first set lead, UNCG takes it, and Norfolk State, here they are, fourth set with the, with the lead, doubling up UNCG, and what does UNCG do? They, call, they, they burn both timeouts. And uh, they made that second set interesting. Will that happen again? I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I got. If you're a betting person, you may think that I'm not because, you know, I just don't have money to throw away. But will will that happen again? Is where I'm. Is what I'm saying. And, and that's my point here. And and I'm wondering that. I'm a curious person. What's gonna what? What is this back half of this fourth set gonna look like? You know. We've seen UNCG do it, so it's not it's not entirely out of question. And the point you're getting at is not getting at is not only have we seen them do it once or twice, we've seen them do it in all three sets tonight. Yes, in the one set in which they couldn't do it, they still battled back. I believe from a six point six. Yep, si yep it was six. Hand and ear over the middle. They do have to side out here. Garvin sends it over. Teeter gets it over, but UNCG keeps it alive, and Near finishes the point, 12-7. Yeah, that's the side out you needed to, to build some, some kind of momentum to claw your way back here and, and start putting together some runs. Who to go to then Hannah Near? Nine kills now for her. Nine kills, just two errors for Near tonight after not having more than seven in the three matches last weekend. Green over the middle, rolls off the top of the tape and down, 12 to eight, Spartans of UNCG back within four. Yeah, there was a critical up by Jocelyn Carter during that volley. I mean, she got it up with her elbow, it looked like, to, uh, to keep the volley alive for her uh, UNCG Spartans. And lo and behold, it winds up into points and the map. Wiggs with her fourth ace of the night. She had four aces in the three matches last weekend. She's got four tonight. And UNCG back with him three, 12 to nine. That's crazy. I mean, she's who you want behind the service line for sure. It's a 3-0 spurt for UNCG. Yeah, five all last weekend, four tonight, nine total now. Wow. That one long, was there a touch? No, there wasn't, and it's four straight for UNCG to make it 12-10, only down by two. Yeah, we know Eichelberger has a, has a strong arm, a little too strong there. Bad set. Can the Spartans take advantage? Carter 
Got it, 12-11. Wow. And here I, am, here I am, I'm gonna say it again, but back in that second set when UNCG was down six, called timeout, they put together a run to get us in the same exact situation here. Down by one and they've made this a ball game again. And there's the timeout from Kathy Bullock. The exact scenario in set two was 15-9. It was 12-6 here in set four. But to your point, it was 15-9, and UNCG came back to eventually tie it at 17. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's just strange how all this is playing out. In the exact, it, the exact same <laughs> way every set. It, it, it really is, and I don't know. I don't think I've really ever seen this before. I mean, I know I, I've walked this earth for a limited, a little bit limited amount of time, but it's just weird. That's I, what I was gonna say. You know, it happens. I would say fairly often where you might see it in the first couple sets or, or mm -hmm. in two of the sets throughout a night. But yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen for four straight sets the ex nearly the exact same thing happen all night long, and yet here we are. And I, I don't know what that attests to. I think it's just. It's it, there are some things in sports you just you you really just can't explain and I mean in some. I was gonna say we can hypothetically uh, yeah. guess all we want. Yeah, and, and, and I'm sure if we even ask the coaches, be like, hey, what was up with the beginning of the sets? They, I'm sure, would just shrug their shoulder and say, technically, I can tell you what's what what's going on, but why it's always happening, I have no idea. Wig serves. And a huge block by Carter and Breen. Breen points at Carter like, yep, that one was you, and we're tied at 12. Stood her up, Gabe. Stood her up, flexed a little bit, tied this game, ties the setup. Tied huge. at 12, Wiggs a near ace. Can UNCG take advantage? Carter. Yep. A 7-0 run for UNCG, and they've got a 13-12 lead. Carter's on fire. Jocelyn Carter, 12 kills. She leads everybody tonight. Here's White, cross court, kept up by Rodriguez. White again, Rodriguez again. Carter gets blocked and that one goes NSU's way. We're tied at 13. <laughs> Rodriguez is a shovel, man. <laughs> wow. Those are two tough shots that she uh, scooped out of there to even the setback up. I, I liked her from the start and she is She's something in that libero jersey. Garvin's handles a hot serve. Breen over the middle, nothing doing. Rodriguez, a little punch over. Williams. Converts 13 kills, no errors tonight for Rachel Williams and Norfolk State back on top 14 13. You know, I'm not sure if you know, she's getting close to a career high or not. I mean, with only six matches last year, she compiled 41 kills. But I mean, double digit kills for the first time at least this year, season high for her. Breen punches one down. We're tied at 14. Breen's been fun to watch over the middle. I mean, she's sitting over 300. Now joins the uh, double-digit di double digit kill column. She's having a heck of a match. 10 kills, just three errors. You said it, hitting 350. <laughs> Calderon serves. Calderon kept it up. McHugh puts it over. And 
and McHugh somehow gives UNCG the lead 15-14. Hey, whatever works. Whatever gets you that point to get one up on your opponent. Again, never has to look pretty. Nothing in the rule book that says that. Calderon, a good line drive serve. What a job by McHugh to get a left hand on that. White, nothing doing. Rodriguez, the dive. Garvins digs it out. White off the block and down. 16-14 UNCG. NSU's point to the back uh, line judge saying he called it out, he called it out, but the up, the up ref said no. There's a tip at the net, so point for the Spartans out of Greensboro. Calderon into the string, 16-15. Again, it was 12-6 NSU, so 10 of the last 13 points have gone UNCG's way, and they lead by one here in set four, trying to close out this match. Yeah, I don't know if what goes on in some of those timeouts for Corey Carlin, but that's always when the, the flip is switched. He's saying the magic words tonight. Breen. Williams lofts one over. Breen again. White. Yep. 17-15. And in this small gym environment, even with the kind of limited spaced out crowd here. It's getting loud here inside Fleming. Yeah, and, th and this is what we missed a lot of last year, you know, just the, the environment and, and what the environment can do for the athletes out on the floor and what they can feel down there too. It's good to have this back. Miscommunication after the block, and the Spartans have their largest lead of this fourth set, 18-15, the UNCG lead. Yeah, good stuff by Brittany Wood near the pin. Started with her there. A near ace for White. Wood puts it over. Calderon kept it up. McHugh gets it over. From the back row, White. And that one way long off the hand of Rachel Williams. <laughs> Kudos to Calderon, man. Wow. Sending it over near the bench and you know, UNCG able to get it back over. This team was down six in this fourth set, and here they are, up four. White into the strings, makes it 19-16 UNCG. Valeria Calderon did not play last weekend. She had five digs total last year. She's got eight digs along with two aces tonight. Tip your cap to her. Yeah, talk about someone who's proved herself in this matchup, and then also... Of course, NSU in the scouting report, of course they would go for her. Not having a lot of experience. NSU back-to-back -back points to get it back within two. 1917, the UNCG lead. Kyla Hunter serves. Breen off the block. White keeps it up, and now Wood. Did it get deflected? Yes, it did. UNCG regains the three-point lead, 20 to 17. I mean, they're, I hate to say they're, uh, you really can't call them a second half team, but a back portion of the set team, that's what they are. At least that's what they've shown this match. 
McRuffin says not so fast, 20 to 18. Yeah, keeping her team in it, McRuffin. I mean, they're still down two. This team's been gritty all night. They've been a pest. A lot of times they just haven't gone away. I'm sure when UNCG <laughs> would like them to. This team just keeps fighting in NSU. Williams serves. Wiggs had to lunge for it. From the back row, Williams. Near over the middle. Williams misses wide, 21-18. Yeah, NSU signaling for a touch at the net. Kyla Hunter was the one for her fourth stake that was signaling a, a touch at the net, but no one paid her any attention. Call stands. McHugh serves. She's got 48 assists, 12 digs tonight. Wow. And they're gonna get a, they're gonna get her for a double touch there. 21-19. Yeah. yeah, that one was obvious. I mean, she might get up to 50 assists in a four setter. <laughs> I'd say that's uh, really good. Yeah. <laughs> her career high 57 back when she was a freshman against Incarnate Word. Somehow, some way, Shante Seal got that to fall and it's 21-20 UNCG, NSU back within one. I mean, if you find a way to get it down, you find a way to get it down. And that's also sometimes the name of the game. Seal now 10 kills, 20 digs tonight. A double-double for her. There she is again. Shante Seal, who had 24 kills and 14 digs in their first match of the season, now has 11 kills and 20 digs here in match number two for Norfolk State, and we're tied at 21. White from the back row. Williams finishes it. 22-21 NSU. Oh. Oh, I, mi I missed it. I missed the call, unfortunately. I did as well. That is the negative to looking down at the stat monitor yeah. right after the point. Well, now I'm starting to think if she was a, above the net when she attacked behind the attack line. I would guess that's the call that makes the most sense. So instead of 22-21, NSU, it's 22-21 UNCG, but make it 22-22. Yeah, yeah, they get that point back, but still. I wish I caught the, uh, the official call there. I was <laughs> By the way, th this is getting intense down the stretch. As it's been all night long. McRuffin to serve. Wiggs receives. Oh. And Kayla White finishes her 13th kill of the night to make it 23-22. Wiggs had a heck of a serve receive in the back row. I mean, I mean, jump serves are never easy to field. But, boy, she had a great read on that and a beautiful up to set up that kill. And here she is behind the service line with four aces already tonight. Wiggs, by the way, also 17 digs. Third time in four matches she's been in double figures in the dig column. Yeah, she's impressive. The senior last year, 3.42 digs per set, led the team. Ten times in 17 matches, Wiggs was over 10 digs. And it's already three times in four matches this year, so we get a timeout. <laughs> 
for Kathy Bullock and company. Yeah, three times in four matches, you're on pace to have a pretty good, uh, pretty good year. Pretty good senior season. Yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. And that too. I mean, that, and, and that's the libero in general. I mean, that, that, that's her job. And I mean, to be to be quick on your feet, to get a lot of those hard shots, and to I'm trying to find uh, the words to describe it. But I mean, to I mean, now I had called Nicole Rodriguez a human shovel, but like that, that, I mean, that's your job. You have to be able to, to feel a lot of those tough shots. So, and also on, on top of things, to be a senior, you have to be a leader out there too. And that's always sometimes not the easiest thing in the world uh, to get everybody to, to, to look to you to lead the team and, and have those qualities as well, which I'm sure I mean, Jen, Jenna Wiggs is. UNCG two points away from closing out this match and improving to three and one on this season. I know UNCG has had uh, some rough seasons in the past, but I mean a three and one start. And but I mean they're 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 in the friendly confines of uh, of their own arena, so hopefully they can add a little more wins to that total. I will say, you say the friendly confines. Fleming Gymnasium was not so friendly to UNCG in the spring. They were 0-9 inside this building in the spring. As that one, I believe, was all tape. It was 24-22. UNCG is a point away from their first home victory in nearly two years. Wig serves. Can they keep it up? Yeah, but they can't get it over. 24-23, NSU back within one. Yeah, UNCG laughing at each other. I mean, sometimes that's that's one of the hardest balls. When, when you know when you hit it backwards and you're trying to get it back to go forwards with just two shots, that's tough to do. Seal to serve. Way long, and that'll do it. 25-23, UNCG takes set four. They take the match three sets to one. And the Spartans of UNCG get their first home victory since November 9th of 2019 when they beat Chattanooga in four sets. It was a gutty, gutty four-set victory tonight, Jay Kermata. And they take set four, 25-23. Well, I'll tell you what, Gabriel Genovese, I mean, in that current set, their hit percentage was only 137, but, I mean, they held Norfolk State to just a 0-4-3 hit percentage. And, I mean, their defense was just as critical as their offense in that final set. But kudos to UNCG, you know, and I don't want to take anything away from NSU. They put forth a tremendous effort as well. But, I mean, when you start sets the way UNCG did and you're able to dig yourself out of a hole, in three of the four sets, that says a lot about your team. Again, one more time. UNCG 25-21 in set one. They lose set two 23-25, and then they take set three 25-22, and win a close set four 25-23. It was close throughout, but they get their first home victory since November of 2019, and they improved to three and one on the season. Any final thoughts, my friend? No, I, I mean, honestly, I can't wait to see what UNCG does the rest of the year. I mean, it's same with Norfolk State. I mean, you, you have two teams that feel like they have a lot to prove moving forward, and if you're NSU, don't hang your head on this. I mean, UNCG's, a, they're, they're a tough ball club, and um, can't wait to keep tabs on them and see what they do th this year. I feel like, they, I feel like they, they should be really proud of themselves moving forward. Again, this part of the Spartan Aggie Tournament, so it's these two teams American and North Carolina A&T part of this tournament this weekend. So UNCG will play American at 11 a.m. tomorrow and then play North Carolina A&T at 7.30. Norfolk State plays North Carolina A&T at 11 and then plays American at 5 o'clock tomorrow. Jake Amato will be on your call tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. for UNCG and American, thanks for joining me today, my friend. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks for letting me crash the party. Appreciate our entire crew tonight for getting us on the air. 
And again, it's UNCG taking this one 3-1 over Nor Norfolk State. So long from Fleming Gymnasium. Well, the theme of the night is back. Norfolk State has an early lead here in set four, nine to five. They have had a lead of four or more points in every set tonight as that one goes UNCG's way, make it nine six. And I slightly correct myself there. Their lead was as big as three for most of the first set, but the point stands, they've had an early lead in every set, yet it's UNCG up two sets to one. Trying to close out this match, but they've got some work to do. Garvin's misses long, 10-6, the Spartans of NSU. Yeah, we were talking about McHugh before we went to break and how much, you know, when, she, when, you, when your setter goes down with an injury of any kind and they miss significant time, I mean, your setter's your floor general, you know? They're, they're commanding a lot of the offense too, and Talking about her having a double double, and you know, last year and how unfortunate it was. It was that she went down and missed time. But I'll tell you what, the amount of double doubles she's had in the short amount of time says a lot. Good block there from Teeter and Eichelberger. 11-6, the Norfolk State lead here in set four. It's been the theme of the night. <laughs> we sound like broken records, Gabe, but. We're saying what we're seeing. And I mean, that's the big storyline of this whole entire match. Cross serves near off balance. And that one finds the floor for Michael Berger. They're doubling up UNCG 12-6 here in set four. And another timeout for Corey Carlin. So he's used both his timeouts quickly, kind of saying, hey, we either got to get this under control now or we're just going to play out the rest of this set and, and go to set five. Well, and, and while we're talking about themes and, and you know, this mirroring that of what occurred earlier on, and I'm sure people at home know what I'm going to say here, and you know, you know what I'm going to say here. This reminds me a lot of the second set where NSU gives up that first set lead, UNCG takes it, and Norfolk State, here they are. Fourth set with the, with the lead, doubling up UNCG. And what does UNCG do? They call, they, they burn both timeouts, and uh, they made that second set interesting. Will that happen again? I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I get if you're a betting person, you may think that. I'm not because, you know, I just don't have money to throw away. But will, will that happen again is, where I'm, is what I'm saying. And, and that's my point here. And, and I'm wondering that. I'm a curious person. What's gonna, what, what is this back half of this fourth set going to look like? You know? That's We've seen UNCG do it. So it's not, it's not entirely out of question. And the point you're getting at, is not, getting at is not only have we seen them do it once or twice, we've seen them do it in all three sets tonight. Yes, and the one set in which they couldn't do it, they still battled back, I believe, from a six-point. Six, point six yep. yep, it was six. Hananier over the middle. They do have to side out here. Garvin sends it over. Teeter gets it over, but UNCG keeps it alive, and Near finishes the point, 12-7. Yeah, that's the side out you needed to, to build some, some kind of momentum to claw your way back here and, and start putting together some runs. Who to go to then Hannah Near? Nine kills now for her. Nine kills, just two errors for Near tonight after not having more than seven in the three matches last weekend. Green over the middle, rolls off the top of the tape and down, 12 to eight, Spartans of UNCG back within four. Yeah, there was a critical up by Jocelyn Carter during that volley, I mean, she got it up with her elbow, it looked like, to uh, to keep the volley alive for her uh, UNCG Spartans, and lo and behold, it winds up into points in the map. Wiggs with her fourth ace of the night. She had four aces in the three matches last weekend. She's got four tonight. 
And UNCG back within three, 12 to nine. That's crazy. I mean, she's who you want behind the service line for sure. It's a 3-0 spurt for UNCG. Yeah, five all last weekend, four tonight, nine total now. Wow. That one long, was there a touch? No, there wasn't, and it's four straight for UNCG to make it 12-10, only down by two. Yeah, we know Eichelberger has a, has a strong arm, a little too strong there. Bad set. Can the Spartans take advantage? Carter, got it, 12-11. Wow. And here I, here I am, I'm gonna say it again, but back in that second set when UNCG was down six, called timeout, they put together a run to get us in the same exact situation here. Down by one and they've made this a ball game again. And there's the timeout from Kathy Bullock. The exact scenario in set two was 15-9. It was 12-6 here in set four. But to your point, it was 15-9 and UNCG came back to eventually tie it at 17. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's just strange how all this is playing out in the exact, it, the exact same <laughs> way every set. It, it, it really is and I don't know I don't think I've really ever seen this before. I mean, I know I, I've walked this earth for a limited, a little bit limited amount of time, but it's just weird. That's I've, what I was gonna say. You know, it happens. I would say fairly often where you might see it in the first couple sets or, or mm -hmm. in two of the sets throughout a night. But yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen for four straight sets the ex nearly the exact same thing happen all night long, and yet here we are. And I, I don't know what that attests to. I think it's just. It's, uh, there are some things in sports you just you, you really just can't explain. And, I, mean, in some I was going to say, we can hypothetically uh, yeah. guess all we want. Yeah, and, and, and I'm sure if we even ask the coaches, be like, hey, what was up with the beginning of the sets? They, I'm sure, would just shrug their shoulder and say, technically I can tell you what's, what, what's going on, but why it's always happening, I have no idea. Wig serves. And a huge block by Carter and Breen. Breen points at Carter like, yep, that one was you, and we're tied at 12. Stood her up, Gabe. Stood her up, flexed a little bit, tied this game, ties the setup. <laughs> huge. Tied at 12, Wiggs a near ace. Can UNCG take advantage? Carter. Yep. A 7-0 run for UNCG, and they've got a 13-12 lead. Carter's on fire. Jocelyn Carter, 12 kills. She leads everybody tonight. Here's White, cross court, kept up by Rodriguez. White again, Rodriguez again. Carter gets blocked and that one goes NSU's way. We're tied at 13. <laughs> Rodriguez is a shovel, man. <laughs> wow. Those are two tough shots that she uh, scooped out of there. To even the setback up. I, I liked her from the start and she is She's something in that libero jersey. Garvin's handles a hot serve. Breen over the middle, nothing doing. Rodriguez, a little punch over. Williams. Converts 13 kills, no errors tonight for Rachel Williams and Norfolk State back on top 14 13. You know, I'm not sure if you know, she's getting close to a career high or not. I and mean, with only six matches last year, she compiled 41 kills. But I mean, double digit kills for the first time at least this year, season high for her. 
Breen punches one down. We're tied at 14. Breen's been fun to watch over the middle. I mean, she's sitting over 300. Now joins the uh, double-digit double kill column. She's having a heck of a match. 10 kills, just three errors. You said it, hitting 350. <laughs> Calderon serves. <laughs> Calderon kept it up. McHugh puts it over. And McHugh somehow gives UNCG the lead, 15-14. Hey, whatever works. Whatever gets you that point to get one up on your opponent. Again, never has to look pretty. Nothing in the rule book that says that. Calderon, a good line drive serve. What a job by McHugh to get a left hand on that. White, nothing doing. Rodriguez, the dive. Garvins digs it out. White off the block and down. 16-14 UNCG. NSU's pointing to the back uh, line judge saying he called it out, he called it out, but the up, the up ref said no. There's a tip at the net, so point for the Spartans out of Greensboro. Calderon into the string, 16-15. Again, it was 12-6 NSU, so 10 of the last 13 points have gone UNCG's way, and they lead by one here in set four, trying to close out this match. Yeah, I don't know if what goes on in some of those timeouts for Corey Carlin, but... That's always when the, the flip is switched. He's saying the magic words tonight. Oh. Breen. Williams lofts one over. Breen again. White. Yep. 17-15. And in this small gym environment, even with the kind of limited spaced out crowd here, it's getting loud here inside Fleming. Yeah, and, th and this is what we missed a lot of last year, you know, just the, the environment and, uh, and what the environment can do for the athletes out on the floor and what they can feel down there too. It's good to have this back. Miscommunication after the block, and the Spartans have their largest lead of this fourth set, 18-15, the UNCG lead. Yeah, good stuff by Brittany Wood near the pin. Started with her there. A near ace for White. Wood puts it over. Calderon kept it up. McHugh gets it over. From the back row, White. And that one way long off the hand of Rachel Williams. <laughs> Kudos to Calderon, man. Wow. Sending it over near the bench and you know, UNCG able to get it back over. This team was down six in this fourth set, and here they are, up four. White into the strings, makes it 19-16 UNCG. Valeria Calderon did not play last weekend. She had five digs total last year. She's got eight digs along with two aces tonight. Tip your cap to her. Yeah, talk about someone who's proved herself in this matchup, and then also... Of course, NSU in the scouting report, of course they would go for her. Not having a lot of experience. 
NSU back-to-back -back points to get it back within two. 19-17, the UNCG lead. Kyla Hunter serves. Breen off the block. White keeps it up, and now Wood. Did it get deflected? Yes, it did. UNCG regains the three-point lead, 20 to 17. I mean, they're, I hate to say they're, uh, you really can't call them a second half team, but a back portion of the set team, that's what they are. At least that's what they've shown in this match. McRuffin says not so fast, 20 to 18. Yeah, keeping her team in it, McRuffin. I mean, they're still down two. This team's been gritty all night. They've been a pest. A lot of times they just haven't gone away. I'm sure when UNCG <laughs> would like them to. This team just keeps fighting in NSU. Williams serves. Wiggs had to lunge for it. From the back row, Williams. Near over the middle. Williams misses wide, 21-18. Yeah, NSU signaling for a touch at the net. Kyla Hunter was the one for Norfolk State that was signaling a, a touch at the net, but no one paid her any attention. Call stands. McHugh serves, she's got 48 assists, 12 digs tonight. Wow. And they're gonna get a, they're gonna get her for a double touch there, 21-19. Yeah. yeah, that one was obvious. I mean, she might get up to 50 assists in a four setter. <laughs> I'd say that's uh, really good. Yeah. <laughs> her career high, 57 back when she was a freshman against Incarnate Word. Somehow, some way, Shante Seal got that to fall and it's 21-20 UNCG, NSU back within one. I mean, if you find a way to get it down, you find a way to get it down. And that's also sometimes the name of the game. Steele now 10 kills, 20 digs tonight. A double-double for her. There she is again. Shante Seal, who had 24 kills and 14 digs in their first match of the season, now has 11 kills and 20 digs here in match number two for Norfolk State, and we're tied at 21. White from the back row. Williams finishes it. 22-21 NSU. Oh. Oh, I, mi I missed it. I missed the call, unfortunately. I did as well. That is the negative to looking down at the stat monitor yeah. right after the point. Well, now I'm starting to think if she was ab above the net when she attacked behind the attack line. I would guess that's the call that makes the most sense. So instead of 22-21, NSU, it's 22-21 UNCG, but make it 22-22. Yeah, yeah, they get that point back, but still. I wish I caught the, uh, the official call there. I was <laughs> By the way, th this is getting intense down the stretch. As it's been all night long. McRuffin to serve. Wiggs receives. Oh. And Kayla White finishes her 13th kill of the night to make it 
Wiggs had a heck of a serve receive in the back row. I mean, I mean jump serves are never easy to field, but boy, she had a great read on that and a beautiful up to set up that kill. Here she is behind the service line with four aces already tonight. Wiggs, by the way, also 17 digs. Third time in four matches she's been in double figures in the dig column. Yeah, she's impressive. The senior last year, 3.42 digs per set, led the team 10 times in 17 matches. Wiggs was over 10 digs, and it's already three times in four matches this year, so we get a timeout for Kathy Bullock and company. Yeah, three times in four matches. You're on pace to have a pretty good, uh, pretty good year. Pretty good senior season. Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. And that too, I mean, that, and, and that's the libero in general. I mean, that, that, that's her job. And I mean, to be, to be quick on your feet, to get a lot of those hard shots and to, I'm trying to find uh, the words to describe it, but I mean, to, I mean, to, now I, I had called Nicole Rodriguez a human shovel, but like that, that, I mean, that's your job. You have to be able to, to feel a lot of those tough shots. So, and also on, on top of things, to be a senior, you have to be a leader out there too. And that's always sometimes not the easiest thing in the world. Uh, to get everybody to, to, to look to you to lead the team and, and have those qualities as well, which I'm sure uh, Jen, Jenna Wiggs is. UNCG two points away from closing out this match and improving to 3-1 and one on this season. I know UNCG has had uh, some rough seasons in the past, but I mean, a 3-1 and one start, and but... I mean, they're in, the, they're in the friendly confines of, of their own arena. So hopefully they can add a little more wins to that total. I will say, you say the friendly confines. Fleming Gymnasium was not so friendly to UNCG in the spring. They were 0-9 inside this building in the spring. As that one, I believe, was all tape. It was 24-22. UNCG is a point away from their first home victory in nearly two years. Wig serves. Can they keep it up? Yeah, but they can't get it over. 24-23. NSU back within one. Yeah, UNCG laughing at each other. I mean... Sometimes that's that's one of the hardest balls when, when you know when you hit it backwards and you're trying to get it back to go forwards with just two shots. That's tough to do. Seal to serve. Way long, and that'll do it. 25-23. UNCG takes set four. They take the match three sets to one. And the Spartans of UNCG get their first home victory since November 9th of 2019 when they beat Chattanooga in four sets. It was a gutty, gutty four-set victory tonight, Jay Kermata. And they take set four, 25-23. Well, I'll tell you what, Gabriel Genovese, I mean, in that current set, their hit percentage was only 137, but I mean, they held Norfolk State to just a 043 hit percentage, and I mean, their defense was just as critical as their offense in that final set, but kudos to UNCG, you know, and I don't want to take anything away from NSU. They put forth a tremendous effort as well, but I mean, when you start sets the way UNCG did, and you're able to dig yourself out of a hole in three of the four sets, that says a lot about your team. Again, one more time, UNCG 25-21 in set one. They lose set two, 23-25, and then they take set three, 25-22, and win a close set four, 25-23. It was close throughout, but they get their first home victory since November of 2019, and they improved to three and one on the season. Any final thoughts, my friend? No, I, I mean, honestly, I can't wait to see what UNCG does the rest of the year. I mean, it's same with Norfolk State. I mean, you, you have two teams that feel like they have a lot to prove moving forward, and if you're NSU, don't hang your head on this. I mean, UNCG's, a, they're, they're a tough ball club, and um, 
can't wait to keep tabs on them and see what they do th this year. I feel like they, I feel like they, they should be really proud of themselves moving forward. Again, this part of the Spartan Aggie tournament, so it's these two teams, American and North Carolina A and T, part of this tournament this weekend. So UNCG will play American at 11 a.m. tomorrow, and then play North Carolina A and T at 7:30. Norfolk State plays North Carolina A&T at 11 and then plays American at 5 o'clock tomorrow. Jay Kamata will be on your call tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. for UNCG and American. Thanks for joining me today, my friend. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks for letting me crash the party. Appreciate our entire crew tonight for getting us on the air. And again, it's UNCG taking this one 3-1 over Nor Norfolk State. So long from Fleming Gymnasium.